Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Tim Dillon Show. I'm very excited to be here with um, the guy who put me on my first podcast in L.A. Nobody put me on. Nobody cared. <coughs> nobody would look at me. Um, and this guy said, come to my house and we'll do a podcast. And it, thank you so much. It's worked out. Uh, it has worked out. Yes. I, I'm a good scout. Yeah. I, there's a couple people where I, I like, where I silently take credit when they when I see them blow up. Since it, What it is is like. It's got to be like when you are an actual talent scout and you, you you see someone that just makes you giggle by yourself. Yeah. And then you watch them blow the fuck up and then you're like, I knew I'm good. I knew I can pick talent. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that. Well, let me ask you a question. What um, what do you think? Do you think we all do this? Like, does podcasting go on forever? Does this eventually stop? Does this Does this become like when we, like younger comics now are not starting them. Yeah. N- They're just no. doing clips. Um, oh, that's the fucking thing. They're going out with short form yeah, stuff. If you can get heckled these days, you're the luckiest comic out there. <laughs> yeah, right. God yeah. damn it, man. I'm right. so jealous. If I had had clips back in the day, because I was chaos on stage. Right. I was chaos. Take my shirt off, drink six beers on stage. Yeah. Welcome it. Welcome chaos. Right. Man, if we had cameras back then. So God does this, it. what happens to this medium eventually? Uh, it's, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, the idea of having a podcast uh, a conglomerate, like a like an umbrella, yeah. where you start podcasting that's dead right that's that the idea of having like a company i think it's dead i agree um i've had a lot of people come and ask to be part of my network and i'm like i don't have a network i do me right i do me that's all i give a fuck about i don't want to lose any of my attention about me social media companies i think they're going away i think people are starting to go no 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 i'll just get that person i want them to work for me i think i think everything's going in house i'll tell you where i'm going yes i'm making because you're a guy that you're always kind of on the new thing like you're always you focus a lot on whatever the new thing is going to be in comedy like you you were doing instagram stories years and years and years ago showing me how many people were watching your story showing me how they could buy tickets you were on all of that shit i wonder i I sometimes i i I sometimes wonder if it's because i'm not as talented as other people i pay attention a little more and i work a little harder yeah and i try things i also don't mind failing but um but yeah, I mean, I remember watching Joe and going, God, man, there's so much meat left on that bone. Yeah, I, I mean, with all the t- all the things he does, and I look, Joe wants privacy, and he's a bad example. But yeah. I remember going, if I was Joe, if I could re- have that outreach, I'll tell you what I'd do. Right, and that's that's the way I looked at it. Right, and right now, what I, would you do? So if you had like his level of power, oh, dude, I mean, would it be? I mean, first of all, I'd be I'd be doing more movies. I, I, right, I, I, I mean. Yeah. I know that he doesn't want to do that, but I think right. the funny shit. Well, he's got a bunch of jobs, right? He's yeah. got the UFC. He's a dad. He's a comedian. Yeah. He does, does the podcast. So, but but it's for sure there's maybe more. Yeah, I would do. He could do. He is lazy, I think, Joe. He he is. He's a little lazy. I think that's kind of what we're getting at. I think what we're getting at is Rogan's kind of like little bit lazy. Is yeah. that where we're going? I think he is. I mean, I think he is. Yeah. I, you look what it is. Okay. He for real. work out more. What does he do? Talk to someone for three hours. That's it. I know. And, and then, then smokes weed and, and drinks. And this whole spending time with my family, oh, Canard. God. Enough. I'm not buying it. Enough. I asked him his daughter's name the other day and he stumbled. The world should know their names. Yeah. <laughs> they should be monetized. Yeah. Every member of that family should be massively big on social. I only trust a man who puts his family on Instagram. <laughs> yes. if, he, if you're not on Instagram, then he's not around them. It's a good point. God, Joe it's really is. A, he does the opposite of you a little bit with that, where he yes. does. He wants more the privacy. I, he might be gay. Is it, maybe is that what it is? His, and this is his beard. This could be it. His beard this is, is absolutely it. I wouldn't be shocked. I think most people who don't put their kids on Instagram are gay. <laughs> I didn't want to hide. If straight. your kids are not all over social media, you're gay. You're gay. If you're not trying to monetize every interaction with your family, if you're not trying to fucking yes, oh, you're a gay man. It sucks when you realize that videos of your daughter go are more popular than yes. videos without your daughter in yeah. it. And then you're like, Yo, Isla. Yeah, I gotta sell tickets in Cleveland. Yeah, get over here. <laughs> Stop having teenager problems. <laughs> But it's you. So where are you going? You just said everything's going in house, meaning that every it, things are going in house. The cameras are going in the house. It's like Epstein, yeah. and yeah. the cameras are in the house. Oh, I just bought a new house. Yeah, and, and built it out to just have all production in there. 
Amazing. So we have now. Is it just so you can live twenty four seven with people filming it? I, I said to my wife, "Can we please put a bed in here because I could yeah. be? I don't. I'd love to just. Could you monetize your sleep? Like, could you? Uh, I've already thought of it. I've already, yes, thought, of yes, I've already yes, thought of it. I've already yes, thought of it. I've yeah. already thought of it. How great would this be? Okay. Yeah. It's a dream podcast. So we get you to go to sleep. It's it's, it's we work with Calm the the app, and right? We, and we get you breathing and get you into sleep, and then as you go to sleep. Then I take over and I go, all right, we're in. And I, 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 poke, I take you through dreams that night, really great dreams. And you can scroll and be like, I want to fight dragons tonight. So now what do you mean by you take them through dreams? So, so you ever listen to a podcast while you sleep and all of a sudden- I always like, fall asleep to a podcast. Oh, this is the best. And then all of a sudden you're like, you have a dream that like, it's you and Hitler and you guys are trying to clear out the eagle's nest before. Yes. And you're like, God damn it, I shouldn't have listened to the fucking Hitler podcast gotcha. while I sleep. So you're doing the, inspiring your dreams that are- Nicer. And then I'm like, hey, grab that Coke. Grab a Coca-Cola. We're going to be thirsty fighting dragons. Oh. And we put ad sales in there. Oh. So you're subliminally getting into their mind. Because that's the last escape people have from the culture of advertising is sleep. And we need to end that. I had a dream. I had a dream. I was listening. I listened to um, to a podcast called This Day in History. I think it's, it's on Noiser. Okay. And they did an ad read in the dream. And the ad read sh- in the in the in the podcast, and the ad read showed up in my dream, and I, I woke up and I went, "That's the future, right?" You if if you can find podcasts that put people to sleep, yeah. And some would argue that mine does, right? Then those, and then you put ads in people's heads while they while they sleep, it's, and then they wake yeah. up and they're like, "It's like program, it's like MK Ultra programming, them. ultra programming, yeah, like while they sleep, and you just can like." Tito's. Oh. Tito's. You're going to wake up tomorrow at 9 a.m. and have a glass of Tito's. Tito's. Yeah. And then you get in there. Who and cares what your wife says? Jimmy Dean sausages. Yeah. Wouldn't that be great before we fight a drag. Sausage sandwich yeah. in there. With so, an, a nice runny egg and American cheese. <laughs> God, I'm fucking hungry now. So now, your what is the next iteration of you? Could because you're doing fully loaded. You're out on the road with yes. a bunch of comics doing minor league baseball stadiums. Doing you're, minor league baseball stadiums. We're starting at Forest Hills. We ended the gorge, and uh, we're doing arenas and minor league baseball stadiums. You're one of the biggest arena comics in the world. What are you now? Number three, uh, three or four? Four. Four. Who are the first? It's such a, it's such who are a, the first three? Uh, Sebastian Fluffy and Joe Coy. You can get them. I'm, I'm, I can, you can get him. I'm going after Joe Coy. You can get I'm him. I'm going head to head with that motherfucker. You can get him. I'm, I'm, he I'm gonna, has the nation of the Philippines. <laughs> the could, whole nation. If I could just isolate a minority to fall in love with me. Yes. We're going head to head. Right. I need I need one. I'm looking at the Mongs. Fluffy did the Mongs? Yeah, the Mongs. What are the Mongs? They're, they're the hill people in Vietnam. Are they drunks? No, the Mongs. Am I saying them wrong? You need... Who what are about the ones Native that... Americans? Because there's there's not enough of them, but they're drunks, and they live on reservations, and they Dude. eat horribly, and they may love you, and you got to teach them, like, yes, your land was stolen, but it's a party. Yeah, I could, I would, dude, I partied with a Native American one time yeah. on Crow ter- Territory, Crow Nation, and flying in his van, and yeah. I'm on a motorcycle trying to catch up with him. We're going to go do where Custard's last stand was, Yeah, and I'm flying on my motorcycle. Cop pulls me over. I'm like, I'm fucking dead. I'm yeah. dead. I've been drinking. I'm on a motorcycle. I'm going 90 miles an hour. <laughs> Funnest, maybe the, all I th- kept thinking was, I'm going to hit a cow. Right. That's what my whole thought. Dude turns around. Leave this land right now to the cop. He's with me. D- ignore him. Let's go. Wow. And I looked at this cop like, sorry, white guy. Yeah, <laughs> it's sovereign land. Dude, it's sovereign land. I fucking could get down on sovereign land. You can land. do anything. How you- do I get my land to be sovereign land? Well, you have to be a Cherokee oh. or a, a Chicka, Chicka, Chicka. I was in Chicka Oklahoma Chicka City. Boom. There's a lot of them. Chickasaw, Cherokee. Yeah. You know, you got to have you got to have some bloodline or you got to trace some. So I don't know. Oh, I, that was uh, that Elizabeth Warren did she that. She tried. I told that Leanne did, one time. Yeah, that's Leanne failed. goes, you know, I'm, I'm part Native American. I went, yeah. don't say that. Right. She goes, I can say it. I said, no, just listen. It's better not to say it, right? Man. I can say it. I am. Is my it- grannies, <laughs> grannies, me mall. Yeah, it was something. My mother always used to say it. My mother used to go, I feel like I'm part Cherokee, and my mother looked like me in drag. And I'm like, there's <laughs> there's nothing more offensive than this comment coming out of your fat white <laughs> mouth. That's the best. So now you've got three. Did you ever think of it? Because it's amazing. You've got three guys ahead of you. Yeah. In this, in in the terms of putting people in seats. It's crazy. Is there, 
is there a moment if you if you get if you beat them if you get to number one and you're the top comic in the world? I go back to clubs immediately. Well, then what? Well, I mean, what the fuck? It's like it's, I'm, already, I'm already stressed out about. What do you do? It. I'm already stressed out about what right. I do now because right now I'm get I like like there is no like what like it, what what else happens? I mean, I made a I made a well, I made a hundred thousand dollar bet with someone that I would never uh, do Raymond James Stadium. Uh, because I was like, I was like, that'll never happen, and the, and the guy was like, dead serious. Like, I'll bet you a hundred thousand dollars it happens. I mean, I, ultimately, I guess you're Kevin Hart. You, you have do, to pay. You, do, you have to pay him. Yeah, if I do it, but I'm never gonna do Raymond James. I mean, where is that in Tampa? Like, how much is it? How many it's people? Fucking seventy five thousand. I mean, but like, that's heavy. Still, that's heavy. It's like, I mean, here's the deal. I mean, uh, you know what? What am I saying? I, I don't believe in negative talk. I believe in positive talk. I put it in the universe. Let's 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 let, let that happen. Let's let the machine comes out Memorial Day weekend. Yeah. I hope it does great. I hope it does great for a lot of reasons. Number one, if it, the machine does great, ladies and gentlemen, you will be seeing a Tim Dillon movie next right. summer. Yeah, that well, is, that's, that is that we would love that. That is almost guaranteed. Well, if comics do well, it helps other comics, right? That's the thing people fuck up on. Yes, it's like you get jealous of other comics. No, dude, when comics do great, it helps you. It just helps you. No one. Looks, I, I, no one looks at Joe Coy blowing the fuck up. Right. I mean, and, and I'll tell you right now, I'm different. Maybe I'm different. I remember one time Joe Coy had a, a video and because I would fuck around with Joe and, and Tom yeah. and bust balls on Instagram. And he had a video of a tour bus inside an arena. And he was like, yo, what's up, Bert? I just got done my show. And all I thought was, I, I, I want to have my tour bus in an arena. Yeah, like, it's crazy. How fucking crazy. How awesome is, is that? How yeah. awesome is that? Right. Turns out it happens when there's tornadoes, but right. it's not, you don't want right. it to happen. You normally yeah. just want it to it stay outside. It means there's a it huge means there's problem. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you want comics to do good. You want comics to blow up. And, and Joe is the one that put that out there of like, help everyone. They just help you. Right. Like, but help them selflessly. Like, I've never, I never, I've never, needed wanted anything from anyone i just want to watch people blow up when tom blew up dude i had a moment i've, I've talked about this ad nauseum but i remember i had a moment when tom, i realized tom was way more successful than i was and we were just friends and we didn't have a podcast together it was during they used to do a thing called oddball um yeah i remember the oddball i got i was oddball on comedy it. festival they booked me for 10 or 12 and then they just kicked me off because they were like eh and I was like, I called Tom. I was like, oh, that sucks. And he goes, you're losing out on a lot of money. And I was like, oh, it's $2,000 a week, and I had to play for my travel in my hotel. And he goes, you're, how much did you get paid? I was like, 2000 a weekend? And he's like, oh. I said, wait, what are you getting paid? And he, goes, and he was like, I don't want to tell you. Because I don't know if we can be friends if you hear it. Right. And I was like, I had to make a moment where I was like, okay, are you cool with finding out exactly where you are in this business? Right. Because that's a moment. And I, literally, I was like, I, I put my arms on my knees on like my arms on my knees and like squatted like sitting in my desk and I had the phone sitting on my desk and I thought about it and I was like what's the number gonna be that I'm cool with it and I go 10 grand a weekend right 10 grand a weekend I'm like that's fine maybe 20 grand a weekend and he goes I'm getting paid 20 grand and I went okay and he goes a show and I went what right and I was like motherfucker that's way bigger than I but I was like I'm happy for him. I it want was him good. To... It was good for you to know that that was out there. Yeah, I'm happy. I want to see everyone succeed. And I want to learn from them. Like I watch what Tom's doing with YMH, and it's really fucking inspiring. Right. You look at what Joe's doing. When Joe's Joe's been the model that everyone builds after, and then you just try to do your own things. Like I've only tried to do fully loaded, only because I had this thorn in my side about getting kicked off Funny or Die. Right. And I was like, I wanted. I was the guy that if I got to do that festival, I would have had the best time out of any comic that did it. Right. I wouldn't have stressed. I would have just. Had Why a did they kick life. you off? I don't fucking. I mean, honestly, for real. Now that I book a festival, because I wasn't going to draw names, right? And I, they could save money on me. I wasn't right. going to bring anyone to the show. It was a favor they were doing. I wasn't bringing anyone to the show. You don't think that when you're young, you take it personally. It wasn't personal. They just were like, they were like, eh. We let's save two grand a week and let's let's see if we can get someone a little bigger. Right. Throw that money towards someone else. So you you direction you're heading in now. You're saying everything's in house. Yeah, and, that's and, that's where I think everything's moving. And, and I look at what you've got. Yeah, this is the direction. Yeah, this is the direction. Yeah, but I I want um, be smart. Don't start. Kick the habit. Put it out before it puts you out. All phases we've heard a hundred times, and yet still continue to have bad habits. 
Our sponsor, Fume, is on a mission to accelerate humanity's breakup from the bad habits that consume far too many of us. Fume is a natural diffusive device that uses plants and behavioral science to help you trade out your negative habit for a positive one. Fume is not a vape. It's a non-electronic device designed to transform your negative habits. Instead of pods filled with potentially harmful chemicals like a vape, Fume uses cores infused with plants like peppermint and cinnamon for delicious natural flavors. With an adjustable airflow dial and a magnetic end cap, your fingers will always have something to do. I like the look and the feel of it. I've had a personal experience with this, and I, well, I will tell you that I use it, and I, my friends have used it, and they have become better people, and their habits have gone away, and they now have good habits. I have a friend. I'm not even going to tell you what he used to do. But he was in jail for many years because he was very sick. And he did a lot of horrible things to a lot of people. And many people refuse to even admit that they know him because he, you know, he, I don't even want to, it's not even important to like get any, he was a cannibal. <laughs> he was a cannibal. But he was he didn't murder people, but he would eat, he would find dead people and eat them. I'm, I'm not going to go into it. I'm just saying that's why he's not still in jail. He didn't murder. He got out of jail and he started uh, with fume. And because it, it has the shape with the, you know, with the, it goes with the hands and the thing and the adjustable airflow. What happened to him was he stopped eating people and he started using uh, uh, fume. The easiest way to stop a bad habit is to switch to a positive one. And fume is designed to do just that. It's Fume's goal to make switching easy, even enjoyable. Go to tryfume.com. Use code TIM. That's try, T-R-Y, Fume, F-U-M.com. And use code TIM to save an additional 10% off on your order today. But now, is there more to be done in-house? For example, yeah. is there more content outside of podcasts? Oh, I think it's... I this think is the thing, right? We watched Louie make a movie. We watched, you know, we've watched a lot of stuff happening. Now, at one point, it was very difficult to do shows like this because the technology wasn't there yet. Yeah. Uh, the platforms weren't there yet. It's still very hard to make a movie on your own. Yeah. You still got to partner up with a studio. You still have to have, you know, in five or 10 years, is that the same thing? Or are people making fucking movies the way that studios made them? Okay, so this is my, okay, this is, I'm going to try to give you an analogy for the way I look at business. I don't, I, I may be the shark at times. Right. But I'm comfortable being the Amora also. Now explain what the Amora is. It's the fucking little sucker fish that holds onto the shark and just takes a ride. Interesting. So like I want my business to be all the Amoras that are on me all the time. I want that to be my business. Right. So in, so like let's say for this is ideally I, this is how I would have done it for the machine. It, but I wasn't set up to do that. Right. I would have signed a deal with Legendary and I would have said I would like to be in control of my marketing. I would like to be in control of my social of all the social media, all the BTS. I want to be in control of all this, all the outside businesses that go along with making a movie that that are representing me as well. I want to be in control of those, and I would like that money. I would like that. I would like that coming to me. So when I build a media company, I'm looking at say I do a TV show again. I'm looking at all the outside shit that they sh that they'll farm out, PR, social media, BTS, all that shit. I want it coming to me. And so I want that. I would like to do that. And I do it very well. Right. And so I already know I do it very well. And I've shown that I've done it very well. Like the marketing for the machine, not to toot my own horn, but I, I got in, in front of a, a, a movie that was sitting on the shelf and got it off the shelf. I got it off the shelf. I went and I leaked the trailer on Rogan. Why was it on the shelf? It was all the fucking shit going on with fucking Putin. Right. And everyone was scared. I mean, like, I shouldn't say this because I know, I mean, I know that pe even now people will be like, you know, but- but everyone was nervous that it may be received negatively. I said, it's not about that. It's a good fucking movie. It's a funny movie. It's a funny, it's a fucking action comedy that has nothing to do with politics. Yeah, it's not called Burt Kreischer Invades the Ukraine. Yeah. <laughs> it's a fucking movie about a story you've been telling on stage forever. But yeah. people were like, yeah. Oh, when, it, when, it, when, that, when all that shit happened down, I remember people going, so are you going to be able to tell the machine on stage again? And I was like, I'm fine. Yeah. My, I don't think my fans are. Now, yeah, no one cares. Yeah. We're all a little sick of this, by the yeah, way. Yeah. Wrap the shit up. We've um, had enough. Yeah. And so and so I got that off the shelf. They wanted to do the announce. I said, let me do it. I did the announce. Uh, this went viral. I said, let me take control of getting 
They gave me the trailer. I said, let me take control of getting that spread out. Yeah. We had, uh, I mean, I shouldn't say numbers, but we had an, an ex a resounding effect with that trailer within 24 hours. Same thing with Razzle Dazzle. I did Razzle Dazzle. I took control of all the BTS. I took control of all the marketing. I took control of everything. BTS, explain what BTS behind means. The scenes, behind the scenes. Gotcha. So I have a film crew that comes with me and shoots yeah, yeah, everything. Yeah. And then in that process, we shot the announce, the trailer, and we did all the editing. We did all that. And then, so that's the business I want to be in is like, it's like just covering my business. I don't need to be the studio. I don't need to be the director. I want everyone around me that's the best. But when it comes to like the little bullshit jobs around me, I want I want to be running all those. Yeah. And that's and I think I think there's people that are even better than me that can do even more than that. But that's where I know I'm good at. I know I'm good at selling me to people that like me. Right. That's it. I mean, yeah. it's like I do it with stand up. I you know, I remember when I got into when I got when I got the first Netflix special, I was very proud that I got myself there. Yeah, because you know you, you got to get yourself there. Like you get yourself there. That's I know a lot of people may may see that differently when they look at us, but like you, you got yourself a special on Netflix. No one got you a special on Netflix. Right. You did yeah. by your stand up. Yeah. By your waking up every day and busting your fucking ass. Right. You got, and that's something to be proud of. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and, and so I remember getting secret time and I was so proud of myself. I was like, I got myself here. I remember, I think in the meeting, uh, this is going to sound horrible. You know, when you say something that's just comes out wrong. Yes. <laughs> I, was, I was at Netflix. Yeah. And they're congratulating me on my special. And I, I don't know why I said it, but I was like, I got myself here and everyone's like, okay. I was right. like, no, 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 no. Like, no, like. I wasn't gifted this. Like I earned right. this, and it was like a moment. It's wife, good that you. It, no, it's a completely insane moment. It's an insane it's moment. It's wildly that my inappropriate. Wife's punching me, going, Shut just up. say thank you. Well, you know what it was. I made mortgage. I made a lot of money in mortgages one month, and my and I was like walking around like I was the shit. And then my old boss said, "Hey, he called me into the office." And I remember I was so embarrassed. He goes, "Hey, man." Act like you've been here before. Oh, I am and not that guy. God. <laughs> I am not that guy. It's my first time, and I'm letting you know. Yeah. It's a surprise party that you've thrown for yourself. Yes, all the time. All the time. Dude, I'm, I consistently, I consistently am, I am, I, have a, I had a friend growing up, his name's Wicho. He's from Peru. Yeah. Originally, and uh, I'm sorry, Wicho, if you're hearing this, but like, he, his, his English was great. He would mispronounce words, and sometimes he wouldn't know what a word. Like, he'd say Rottweiler. Right. And you're like, it's Rottweiler. And he'd go, but wiser. And you know it's Budweiser. Right. And then you say a word like uh, omnipotent, and he go, what does that mean? And, like, where everyone else would just go, like, I don't, I don't know what it means, but I'm not right. going to say anything. He had no problem saying, I don't Ask know what him. that means. Tell right. me what that means. And I, I enjoyed that about him because I got to learn what the word meant, too, because I didn't know what it meant. Right. And so I, I, I took from that, like, it's okay to be a fucking country rube every step of the way and let people know this is fucking, this is like, I've never done this before. Like, I'm terrified. I'm nervous. I'm scared. This is fun. Like, I am fucking, I am, I'm the guy in the end zone. I'm the guy in the end zone that didn't even score and I'm dancing. Your tour schedule is so intense. You're yeah. all over the world, really. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you've you done, it's a lot of America. Have you gone overseas? I know you have. Um, what? Is is this sustainable forever? My life? Yes. No. Interesting. No, 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 no. I'm. I, I, I look at your schedule, and I I go on the road a lot, and I look at your schedule, and I go, this is really amazing. It's it's an amazing commitment. You've you've built something that's wild. But I also go, wow, this is a you know, this is a pace yeah. that is incredibly you know demanding. Well, I think also. There's two things that go in with that. Number one, I was also, and I've said this ad nauseum, but like I was also, when I met you, I was not successful. You were less. You were still successful in my eyes. When I met you, I remember you were doing yeah. six shows at the DC Improv and you had sold them all out. And I was like in the little room. Yeah. And I had come to talk to you and you were really, really nice and kind and you were telling me about the difference, how what's selling out. Like they were, he goes, you go, they're selling out, they're selling out in pre-sale, they're selling out in adding shows. There's thirty dollar tickets, right? You, you talk to me about that whole thing, and then you yeah. go, you go to theaters after this, and you were telling me about all this stuff. But I remember you were still the, one of the biggest club acts in the country, but you hadn't broken to the next level. I hadn't broken, yeah, I definitely hadn't broken, and so 
But there was a period too where I was like, I got I, where I got fired from Travel Channel, and I was right, and I was just like, my podcast what didn't have money coming in, and and I was just like, what the fuck am I gonna do with myself? Yeah. And I remember being at the store, and and a couple comics that were more arguably more successful than me, one of them, that one of the other ones definitely, just leaving me mid conversation for someone more famous, and I yeah. was like, I was like, wow, that's where I am, and this conversation with Tom. So I think because I got to experience that, I look at this going like, make hay while the sun shines. I had someone tell me that the other day, uh, one time this comic said, you know, it doesn't go away. You don't have to do it all in one bite. And I was like, oh, it goes away. It goes away for everybody. It goes away for everybody. Of course. And it's going to go away for me. Look, you look at like, you, and I think you want it to go away. I think you need it to that, go away. And yeah, and that's what, that makes you enjoy it. But I, I don't think I can keep this pace up. Like, this pace is insane. I thought I had a couple weeks off before I go to Australia. I don't. I had right. three days off, and I was like, fuck. And so for me, I just would love to, I mean, look, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it until the wheels come off. Right. I mean, I guess. Yeah. It's like, what's the other option? Am I, what, should I get into a TV show? No, I don't know. Like, no, I mean, I mean yeah. like, like, should I start watching Secession? Like, I don't, Well, it is. Like, it, well, number one, it's a good show. Is it? But I, I never, wouldn't. I wouldn't uh, replace working with just watching a TV show. Yeah, that wouldn't Cause, be yeah. it. Because that's the option. Do you ever think? Do you ever think? Well, because you've done the movie now, yeah, and you you you've toured so much. Do you ever think of? Is there anything else you want to be really good at? Do you ever look at something and go, "Fuck, I want to master some other." discipline whether it's related to this business not in the business see what's interesting about rogan is he's got his fighting right yeah. he's got his martial arts like yeah. he does that he's in there he does muay thai he does jujitsu whatever he, yeah. this i'm is, gonna open a glass of rose is please that okay? please and what he does is that is so essential to like who he is as a human being because obviously he's got comedy he's got work he's got a family but he's also got this other thing and i always wonder like is there another thing that do do we miss out on not having that? Not that it has to be fighting. Like, do we miss out on not having that other discipline that that some that he has? Uh, no, I mean, I maybe. Yeah. I mean, I like, I like. I'm not gonna start jujitsu. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, should mine be tennis? Should mine be like? Something where I'm like, oh, I've got the people I do this with. Yeah. We play tennis. We 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 keep score. We we care. Like I'm like, what else is there in life? I don't know. I don't know. Like what? <laughs> I don't know. I don't I don't know. know. What do people do? People golf. Sure. You know, people golf. Then you people, gotta then you gotta check bags. I know. You go on the road, you're checking, checking a fucking bag. A, I it's never like, check what the bags. Fuck? That's a Burt Kreischer rule. You can buy what you need when you get there. <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah. I never check bags. Um I've thrown out so much bought shit where I go, I just needed it, and then I go. You make a good point because sometimes I'll look at your schedule, I'm like, that's crazy. He's doing that. But then you're like, what is the other like the other day? I was in the in the comedy store in the green room, and like my godson stops in. He's Chinese. He's two, and they threw him out because he's not not allowed to be in the green room because like <laughs> some nonsense fucking rule. You know what I mean? That uh, now they're policing the green room over there. Great. After years of Guantanamo torture, supposedly people were getting. But the point is, my little godson straight and I'm going. What am I supposed to do? Be here every night? Like I like it. Yeah. But what am I supposed like? Yes, birds on the road like a demon. Bad out of hell. I mean, he's he's got more miles on him than like the Pagan's motorcycle gang. I mean, you are out there, but it makes sense because after a certain point, what are you going to do? You can't do spots. No. You can't just show up to a place and do spots. You know what I mean? There is a certain, there is a progression where I feel like you are doing the right thing of like you outgrow certain things in comedy where it's like some of it's fun. And then you go, you know what? If I can't create my own world, this whole thing's about creating our own world. Oh, yeah. And that's what you've been able to do on the road. You have your friends, the people you like, the, the you know, you have created your own world. And then when you're living in these other worlds, they're like, the baby's got to go and this and that. And you go, hey, man. Oh, I have a I have a real problem with, uh, with rules. Blue Chew. Do I even need to describe this? But I will. It's a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but in a chewable tablets at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night. 
so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises. The process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part, it's all done online. So no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package. Guys, remember the days when you're always ready to go? Don't be that guy that says, I missed out or I don't need it. Go to Blue Chew. It helps the penis get hard. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at BlueChew.com. Chew it and do it. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code TD at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's BlueChew.com, promo code TD, to receive your first month free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. We thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. Yeah. I have a real problem. Like, I set myself up into a, into a world where I got to define the rules. And right. So, like, little things. Little things, like, when uh, when people are, like, like last night, uh, I, I got a hotel room. We were in wherever we were, and I got a hotel room for the afternoon. I said, I'm going to sleep. I have a busy week this day. Yeah. I'm not going to, I'm not going to fuck around. I'm not going to work out. I'm not going to do play disc golf. I'm going to sleep today in the hotel room and then I'll go to the show. And my assistant came in and he's like, show starts at seven. We should be out of here by like six 30. And I went, no. And he goes, what? And I said, when do I go on? I'm not going on at seven. I'm not, right. I don't need to be there early. Don't right. like, I like little things like that. I go, it starts when I show up and right. And if it, and, and so just so we're clear, I'm not going to get there. And, I, and like, I, I'm like that with the airport. Like, I just, I'm so fucking bad. I agree with you. I have clear. I go right before the flight. Yeah. I like to get there. I don't wait. I don't wait for yeah. one person on my team. If you're not ready, I'm walking. I'm Fuck going. You. And I And sadly, I do that with my family. Yeah. Like, no, my, and with they, my girls, they should. I go, I go, hey, sorry, girls. You're fucking around. You, get, you guys, everyone. It's, you're on the plane. We fucking, Leanne one time, I go, I, we're, we're in line at security. And she goes, I don't, I go, let's go through clear. And she goes, I don't have clear. I go, okay, well, you wait here. I'm going to go in. She goes, well, why aren't you waiting with me? I go, because I'm not, because I'm not an idiot. Right. I'm not, I didn't set my life up to, to be an idiot. Right. You set it up to do idiot things. Right. Like you, not have clear. Not have clear. I'm going in clear. And you then, stupid bitch. Yeah. And yeah. so, and then she goes, just wait, I'm your wife. You wait with me. And then I can hear people commenting, what the fuck's wrong with you, Bert? No, like, they don't know. They don't get it. So I wait with her in clear. It's so demoralizing. We, I wait with her in fucking, t- just Ugh. in regular fucking, whatchamacallit. Disgusting. And then we get up and she goes, oh, I got that white box thing. And I go, that, that's clear. She goes, oh, I got that. I went, oh. I went, oh, I my like, God. I was like, I know you're not supposed to hit women. No, but sometimes. But like, that would have been a time. No, that would have been a that time. That would have been definitely. I was so angry. She goes, I got that. I didn't know what that, why, why, why didn't you tell me it was a white box thing? Right. Oh my fucking god! Has Leanne ever said slow it down? Yeah. Yes. She said it today. Yeah. She called me today and I and I and said, oh, I don't know where I was on the plane or whatever. Yeah. I don't know where the fuck I was. She goes, uh, I'm gonna call Tim and cancel today. You need to. You need your rest. And I went, hold on. I love Leanne. I would have totally been okay with that. No, I said, hold but on. I, I do like that you're here. Out of all the things I'm doing today, this is the one thing I like. Right. Like this I'd would be like, fun. Cancel the other shit. Yes. This is the one thing I like. I'm getting to drive into Beverly Hills. Yes. I'm getting to see fucking LA. I get to feel like I live here. I went over the hill. Right. This is the fucking thing. I got a bottle of rosé. I wore the, my tracksuit. You like, have a bottle of rosé in a in a in a beautiful. It's like you know my father had one of these bags, but he was a wine salesman. But I like that yeah. you have it, and it's not your business. No, it's, it's not my just, business. This is your personal and your enjoyment. But this is what I like. Well, just me and you gossiping out there. Oh, it's this great. This is the fucking thing I live for. It's just so, it's fun to hang out with someone and just compliment other comedians. Yeah, yeah. Just talk it's great insane. about how few specials are being released these days. How many specials? I think it's 150 to date. Too many. From January to March. That's too many. 150. What is comedy in five or 10 years? Is it anything we recognize? Oh, it's not going to be something we recognize. Oh, Bert, tell us what it is because... I feel like you kind of know, or do you, do you have an idea? Well, I think- I th- Are managers still going to be around? Mm-mm. No. They're gone. They're gone. Wow. Sadly. Sadly managers are, did you hear that, managers? You're done. I think managers- The third biggest comedian, or fourth, third, fourth? Or fourth. Fourth biggest comedian telling you you're done. You are done. I, th- I mean, I think, I think what happens is everything's in-house, once again- Doug Stanhope is the prototype. That's right. Doug Stanhope did it right. That's right. And I remember telling my manager, I want what Doug has. 
And she was like, maybe, maybe that's not exactly what you want. Right. Like you don't want to live in Bisbee in a compound. Right. And, and but but Doug has everything top to bottom. He has his own bartender. He brings everybody in. Brings Everybody's everybody in. under the umbrella of what he wants to do and yeah. what his vision is. But you gotta be willing to fucking work nonstop. That's the other thing I think that people don't realize. You're not working less now. You're working more. Way more. You're I actually work. working way more than you would have when you could rely on a Comedy Central oh or whatever, where you would just show up. Now you are working. You're hiring people. You're interviewing people. You're figuring out dynamics. You're being a man. It's weird. It's I different. Went, I went to Stabby's house the other day. Yeah. And he had five people in there. One dude, and it's his house. Podcast studio, an editing bay. Yeah, he said he woke up the other day and there was a guy on the couch that he didn't know. Right, and and but that he Stabby works, all, like that all the time. That's the norm. If you're not willing to work all the time, then you may get passed by. That's right. Look at Schultz. Schultz is all the busting time. his. You go into his place and everything's in house with Schultz. Dove yeah. does Dove's yeah. his best friend, agent, manager. Right. I mean, he does everything, and then he's got a great team of people around him that are all willing. To, to work 24 hours a day. Is there a, a day. danger? Let me ask the danger, though, because I always li like to look at the other side of things. Okay. Is there a danger that when everybody's working so hard, and I, I understand this, and I'm doing it, and we're all running around, are we not living? Oh, this is living. This is living. This is living. This is living. What about what about the old living where they oh, like weren't blowing dandelions and shit? Well, like having interactions with people that weren't monetized. Uh, I'm have you it. ever talked? Have you ever talked to a fucking regular person? I know. Jesus Christ! Go to drop off at my kid's school one time. Yeah. Okay. And then just watch those yeah, conversations. But I, sometimes I wonder about the the great material that we kind of pull from life. You, you you're gonna get it. Like gotcha. I mean, like here's the deal: you're gonna live a regular life. That's right. You're gonna live a regular life. I have regular friends. We have a group of friends called the campers. We all hang out and talk and we, right. we do shit. And we go on vacation together. That's gonna fucking happen. Of course. You can't not, that's not not gonna happen. But like, I don't wanna sit out there and like, I don't like, I don't need to, I don't need to like immerse myself in a pickleball league. No. I don't, I'm not gonna do uh, adult softball. And right. Like, I'm not, like, none of that shit matters a to me. Agreed. Like, I I mean, I, I would, I, I, I guess I get drawn to my interests. Like I like I like a good conversation at an airport bar. Yes. I like a good conversation at a dive bar. I like going and seeing houses I'm not going to buy. Oh, I love that. There's nothing better than that. Oh, that's so much because fun. Because it helps the realtor because it trains them. Can we go? Let's go house Anytime shopping. Anytime you want. Can, can, but I have, immediately, immediately go, let's monetize I it. Let's monetize have, it. No, we'll why, film it. Why don't, yeah, why don't we film it? Why don't 100 we go to open houses? I will do it tomorrow. I'll I, do it anytime you want. Do you know my favorite thing to do is? Yeah. Uh, I like to profile the people whose house we're looking at. Oh, and see, yeah. I, I mean, well, that's my whole thing. My thing was like fake business where I would call realtors and I would get into actual negotiations about a property and I would say I would be a fake realtor and I would call them up and I would go, listen, my clients are deadly serious. They live in the United Arab Emirates, but here's, you know, here's a couple of things that we need to get. We need to, you know, and what, what happens is it's immediately real business for the realtor, but it's yeah. fake business for me. And it's real business for them, yeah. but it's fake business for me because the clients don't really exist. They don't know it's yeah. fake business. 90% of what you do in sales is fake business. It's not real until they sign the thing, which very few people do. Yeah. So even though it's fake business, it's real business for them. Yeah. So it trains them. It keeps them going. You're and just, it's fun you're, for me. Yeah. I represent a lot of very discerning clients in the Los Angeles area. Yeah. None of them exist. <laughs> None of them exist. But they are high end. They're very discerning. They want Malibu on the water. They want Beverly Flats. Oh. If they want prime, prime, prime. And I, I represent hedge funds, real estate investment trusts. I represent massive guys that are from Greenwich, Connecticut. Oh, my God. I represent them, and I call these realtors. Oh, they waste all of their time, the ones you see on TV. And, 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 and they just go along with it because they have, they're vapid, and there's nothing inside of them except they just want a, someone to sign this goddamn paper. It's the best. And it's the best. So I like wasting the time of people. And it's really, it's it's a great thing for both of us because sometimes I have time and I'm in traffic and I just call them up and I go, listen, how are you? I go, how are you? Listen, I have a client that's very excited about this property. It seems priced a little higher relative to some of the comps in the area. And I just wanted to know, are there details about the house that would justify that? I'll wait. And then they're like, well, absolutely. I'm glad you asked. So the owner oh, that's fucking actually, great. yeah, and I do it all the time and I love it. Oh. It's, I have no respect for the real estate profession. And and I do, That's but I don't. Best. Yeah. So what it's fun, it's great to waste your time. I've brought them up to, I'm like, the offer's coming in. And you can tell, <laughs> these people can tell. 
And I only do it to high-end people. I wouldn't hurt the small and medium yeah, people that yeah. need the money. I do it to high-end people. And I'm like, the offer's coming in this oh afternoon. God. And they'll call me back. They're like, what happened with that offer? I'm like, oh, my God. You'll never believe what You'll happened. You'll never believe what happened. They invaded the Ukraine. <laughs> so, <laughs> so to me, I would love, I, I think Tim Dillon, Burke Kreischer, I love real estate. It's fascinating oh. to me. Realtors are very dumb, and they make a lot of money. And that's, those are my favorite types of people. Yeah. That's the American dream, to not be educated, to just <laughs> kind of be like fly by night and to somehow amass oh. a fortune God. talking about tile, the American dream. Oh, my God. So we these are my these are things I like. These are passions I have. Like, And you're right. It's like we shouldn't feel guilty that we don't do jujitsu or whatever because we have things that we're also, well, you we know. Would've, we would have, I mean, first of all, here's the thing is, like, we would have been that guy already. That's a good point. Like, I mean, Joe was not a comic who discovered jujitsu. No, he was doing he was that like, when he was, he was into martial he's arts. He's like a guy, right. Like, he was into martial arts. Like, I can play golf. I'm, I'm really good at golf. But, like, I'm not the guy that wants to go. Right. I, I mean, I don't, I don't like I like playing golf every now and then, but I want to do it if like I want to do it once in a while. Right. Um. I, I I can play tennis too, and I used to do it in the mornings. But my, do you want my, to do the garden? What's that? Madison Square Garden. Do I? Yeah. Uh, is this part of? Is this? I, mean, I would imagine yeah. it's kind of a. It's, is it a pinnacle or not it's really? Not, it's not my. It's not my white whale. Okay. I mean, it's, it would be cool. It'd be really cool. Yeah. But it's definitely not. I mean, like, I what is the white whale? If there is a white whale, I don't know. I think I, I think I got it. You, I think you've got many of them. I think. Well, I mean, Red Rocks is a big deal for me. Massive and uh, such and a cool place. It's so cool. And then Red Rocks was cool. A cruise was a big deal for me. Right. Um, uh, the ba I did the Boston Garden, which I didn't wasn't on my list, wasn't on my radar, and it right. was it was one of the coolest things I've ever done. Yeah. In my career, and then the Emily Center in Tampa, we sold. I sold that out. And that was like, I don't forget what the number was, but it was like, I mean, it was fucking sold to the ceiling and my parents were there. They were in a box with yeah. like a bunch of sports guys were there. It was like a big fucking deal. Big deal. I don't think I have, I don't think I have like, uh, I don't really have, I mean, doing Ma Madison Square Garden would be massive. It would be fucking amazing. Yeah. Um, I think it would be great. I think it would be great. But it's like, it's like at this point, I, I, I it would be awesome. I, I don't, you don't want to negate it. Yeah. But, uh. I've just done more than I ever thought I'd do, so I don't. It's hard to like. What advice do you give the guys that are like opening for you on the road? Do you, what do you tell them? Don't stop opening for me, right? Yeah, because that's yeah. the worst thing you can do. That's a good it's point. What we were talking about the thing before. You don't, you don't ever want to be viewed as someone's opener. So you say to them, "Stop opening for me." Uh, one guy, I just, I, I was like, I like him way too much, and I just had to, I, I had to be like, he needs to do his own thing, right? Because right now, people are seeing him as, as my guy. Right. Which is the worst thing that can happen for That's you. That's right. Because then you go to clubs and people don't, I mean, you don't know this, but people don't respect you. Right. They, they go, oh, he's only, he's only dot, dot, dot because of dot, dot, dot. Right. And so um, there's a couple guys that I had to do that too because I like them so much. And, and, and they're fun. And they're fun. They're fun. They're the, I mean, the best. And they're the great. Best. And they're great comics, but it's just, unfortunately, you do have to tell them, like, get away from me. Yeah. Like when I started working with JoJo, asked me to open for him a couple times and I was like, I was like, I don't want to. I like, I I want to be your friend, right? And I don't want to depend on you for money, and I don't like, I don't want to be like, look at your schedule ever and go like, oh shit, he's doing this. Why? Am, maybe I should text him and see. That, if I can. See, that's that's absolutely. I've opened for only a few people a handful of times. You yeah. were one of them. Yeah, but you, times. but you opened for me once. Yes, and then you were like, and then I hit you up again. You're like, nah. Yeah, and then and then I mean, and I, I would argue. Yeah, in this in this algorithm i just created yeah look where you are well yeah but, was, yeah but you're yeah. not you've never been someone's opener never you've never been never. someone's opener. never i was you're just tim dylan i did that sandy uh, gig with you in san antonio and then i did that theater uh, now you're in an arena but i did that theater a couple of years later because i was like i just want to get to these places on my own yeah and i was able to do like the chicago theater on my own and the masonic and all these amazing rooms the what beacon you, what, and the, what you've done is insane i mean it's insane i mean you don't understand it's like it's uh, it's so impressive to see mostly not just the venues you're playing, but from my side, I'm a little yeah. more of the business side, how quickly you sell them out. Like well, that's what's impressive. Well, it, you know, I think that like- And who you're touring with. Like, yeah. Like, I mean, Sam Talent. Sam Talent is one of the greatest comics in the country. He's he really one of my is. favorite people. He wrote a book about stand-up that's brilliant. It's brilliant. You and, know and, what I mean? Running the light. If you haven't bought it, you know, you will, and he's going to do Rogan soon. My last opener, Marcelo Hernandez, is now on Saturday Night Live and, the, like, the breakout cast member. So, like, the, the people that I've had, they've been lucky enough to kind of, I, I look at people that are working hard, that are good or whatever, and... Um, you've got to have that. You've got to have that energy for yourself. 
Guys, go get ExpressVPN. Don't be stupid. This new thing that came out, they're trying to ban VPNs. Obviously, they're doing, you know, the government's trying to ban them. It means they're good and they're helping you. Going online without ExpressVPN is like leaving your kids in the, with the nearest stranger while using the restroom. Well, what's wrong with that? Who writes these? Anyway, the point is ExpressVPN is basically security, okay? It's not letting people steal your data, whether it be the government or private corporations. Uh, it's very important. It creates a secure encrypted tunnel between your device and the internet so that hackers cannot steal your data. Hackers can make some serious cash selling personal information on the dark web, but ExpressVPN has made it easier than ever to keep your information safe. Literally, everyone I know has a VPN right now. Everybody. I mean, if you don't have one, it's like cra you're like leaving your house naked. Secure your online data today. Go to expressvpn.com slash Tim Dillon. You get three months free. No games, no gimmicks. Easy. 90 days for free. Expressvpn.com slash Tim Dillon. Get three extra months, 90 days, absolutely free. I'm telling you, there's no reason not to do it. No reason not to do it. This prevents people, hackers, corporations, these other websites, social media companies, harvesting your data, selling your data, putting you on a list. All of these things are prevented when you use ExpressVPN. It is so important, um, you know, when you're connecting to an unencrypted network in cafes, hotels, airports, any network that's not your own. Your online data is never secured. So you have no idea. Any hacker on that network, you can sit in an airport and just fucking get people's info, okay? So the reality is, ExpressVPN is the best VPN. It's one that everyone uses. And if you're a fan of the show, it makes sense. You get 90 days free, three months. ExpressVPN.com slash Tim Dillon. And I, and I think that, like, listen. And you did. I've been lucky enough to, like, Joe Rogan, people like you, people like Joe, have been really good to me. You've shared your audience with me in different ways. You've allowed me to come on your shows and be funny. And, you know, I was able to, I didn't know what podcasting was when I started. I was able to get into it. I was good at it. I loved radio as a kid. I listened to everybody. I love all radio. kinds of weird I radio, radio from psychologists to preachers I to, to fucking radio. political. I loved, you know, when I would drive around with my grandmother in Long Island when I was an actor and they had me in like singing class and dance class and we would listen to Rush Limbaugh. This is how gay Republicans are created. This is the lab. <laughs> the laboratory is a Ford Taurus on Long Island being driven to but, dance class, yeah. but on the way listening to a lot of crime statistics. And I uh, just fell in love with the idea of radio and, and, and podcasting. I just liked it. And we talk to people twice a week, every week. And the, the, those people have been nice to support us in a myriad of ways. But one of them is coming out to see me do stand-up and, you know, having a great time doing that. So I, I've been lucky enough that there's a platform to, to, you know, that I saw you guys when I got out to L.A. I moved. I looked at all you guys and I went, that's what I want. Yeah, but you, you've got the, you've got, there's a gene that you have or you don't have in comedy. Yeah. And that gene is, and I, I would argue maybe I, I'm on the fence with it. I guess I, I'm I, not anymore. Tom has it. Yeah. You and Tom have the same gene where you do not mind working under someone and figuring things out. Yeah. But within a matter of seconds, you're leapfrogging over them. Well, I always, I always like to learn from people. I like to learn. I like to learn. I always learned. I was always paying attention to what they did that I didn't like. Yeah. And then I go, oh, don't do that. Like, that's the yeah. easiest way for me to to, uh, to get better was to see what I didn't like what people did. When I came to L.A., it was an interesting time because I was exposed to not only comedians, but I was sitting down with people like Logan Paul. I was doing his podcast. Logan Paul's, I just did his podcast the other day. They're amazing. You on Logan Paul, Paul was so much fun. Yeah. Because, you know, and, and I got to be honest with you. That was the thing that transitioned Logan Paul for me where I went, okay, I'm going to I'm going to start paying attention to him. He's like, a really cool dude. He's a really And he cool likes comedy and and so being exposed to like that world and people like the Nelk kids and like, dude, Tana Mojo, all these people that had built careers on the internet that weren't necessarily comedians, but they were personalities. And you take a little bit from what they do. And but then you, you look did at, yeah. that. No one else was doing that. You know that, right? Yeah. No I one don't... else was fucking with Logan Paul. Interesting. And, and, and yeah. I remember you came and you went on Rogan and you said, if I had all the money in the world, I'd invest in him being president. I would. And I went, and, I, and you, but you understand that like, you'll never get this the way I get it. Right. But like, we were so set in our ways as comics yeah. that we looked at the internet guys as like, whatever. Right. And you looked at them seriously and you were like, 
Logan Paul has a huge following and he's putting out content and he's a fun guy and he's yeah. nice. And uh, I literally now look at it. And I got Sebastian yeah. Fluffy, yeah. Theo, me, Rob Deerdeck, everyone does Logan Paul's podcast. Everybody. And and listen, when I did it, I I was like, I didn't know him, but then I met him and I was like, this guy's actually pretty cool. I saw him uh it, you know, talking about comedy. He liked comedy. Like so to me, it's like, listen, I think there's things you can learn from all kinds of different Dude, people. And I think 100%. comics get very stuck in whatever mode they're in and the model of doing something. And I got flack. Some of my fans were like, that's fucked up. You would talk to these guys. I had Jake Paul on my podcast at the Bitcoin convention in Miami with the Winklevoss twins. These are hilarious moments in my yeah. life where I'm sitting on a stage. You got to remember, I started comedy in a tattoo parlor coffee shop in Long Island called Wild Child, yeah. spelled with a Y, like Wild Child. And I'm sitting at the Bitcoin convention in Miami where fucking the head of Twitter, Jack Dorsey, just got off the stage. Then I'm getting on the stage and I'm interviewing the Wigglevoss twins and Jake Paul. And it's hilarious. Like it's these fucking awesome. These are insane lives. And to me, that was the fun of it. So the fun of it to me is like not being bored yeah. and creating insane things that are fun. Whereas it's like, I'll talk to anyone. I just messaged David Hogg, the kid from Parkland. And I'm like, I'd love to just talk to you on my show. Oh my God. I have no agenda. He hasn't gotten back to me. That's fine. Maybe this will find its way to him. But <laughs> I'll talk to anybody. And, and it's because like, I just want to have fun and I want to do cool shit that I wouldn't be doing if I was still a mortgage guy. But your but your your vibe has always been so authentically you. It was, it was I mean, and, 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 and I not to discredit what I said earlier about like loving finding you or whatever, but like when I met you, I just was like you ever meet someone and you're like I I'm not done getting to know that person. Yeah, yeah. Like I want to meet it's how I guess you ultimately fall in love with people, but it's also how you make friends. Yes. Where you go like, like when I met Tom, I remember going like, how is he so confident? Right. Like I remember being like, how does he believe in himself? Right. And and uh, when I met Joe, I was I was like, how is he so curious? I mean, right. like if that the one word yeah. I say about Joe, he is the most he wants curious to know motherfucker things. that I go. I'm not more curious. When I met you, I was like, I was like, I'm not done talking to him yeah and i was like i gotta i want to get to know him and i think i think that's the fun in this business is like just like there are people that look at it in in micro bites and they're right. like how do i get this how do i get that how do i get this as opposed to looking at the bigger picture going like look at that how do i shoot in that direction yeah how do i get in how do i land over here and and i i think we were cutting our nose off despite our face with all the interesting people that we could have met I think Joe is a huge part of that, but you, yeah. I mean, I can just say about the Logan Paul shit, I would never have fucked with Logan Paul. If well, I, I, I appreciate it. I, I think that, like, there these worlds that we're all in now are no longer as isolated as they were. Yeah. Everybody is in the same place. Everybody uh, is making stuff. Everybody is has an audience. Everybody so this is, how, yeah. this is how I'd run your business. Yeah. This is what I'd do. If I could be you, I yes. would love to be you. Well, oh, you're so much better than I am. That's not true. You no, know, you really are. Like, cause I know how good I am. Like, yeah. trust me, I'm, I would love to be you. So, what should I do? Uh, I I would have. How many employees do you have right now? We have one to two. We have about two. Okay. We have very lean operation. We're gonna have to scale up. I know. I know. We're gonna. We we should get more people. You need six, eight. You need you need a personal assistant that's dealing just with your touring. Yes. And then you I need, agree. And then you need, I would say, I would bring someone on to help you focus on your movie stuff. Yes. Uh, and then, and then I would start there. And then when I when I signed a movie deal, I would say I would I would if I were you, I would take control of everything they have. Right. I mean, you're you're, you're I mean, I, 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 your trajectory of your career is going to be astronomical. I think. Well, that's so very I would have, nice I would have all that. Say. I would have all those people in place for when it happens. It's very nice of you to say. Um, and here's the problem: is that yeah. you're, I, I know the problem is that yeah. right now with small overhead and a big income, you don't have to worry about money. No, that's the problem. But yeah. the, the the other thing is like, I, you, I, do you have a manager? No. I would get. I would hire someone to be your manager. Really? I would. Really? Yeah. What about yours? I would. You can get mine. Does she not like me? Does she like me? No, she loves you. She, she does. loves you. 
She loves you. We're, I feel like me and her, there's a weird similarity, maybe, in a sense. She loves you, and she loves you. I, I don't. I can't talk too much about. Of course. About her because I love no, her of death. Course. Never, like I as I say, I'm get management's going away. Yeah. I'll never stop working with her. No, of course. Her insights. Her insights have been golden for me on so many times. When I did uh, the Hot Summer Night Store, when I, I created yeah. the, the drive-in movie theater tour, yeah. um, I backed out. Initially, they booked me like 12 dates, and I backed out. And I said, I'm out. I don't want to do it. Everyone was telling me, don't do it. And I'm a regular guy. I'm not like this fucking guy right. that knows everything. I just ha have, sometimes I'll have crazy ideas, yeah. and then I have people in place to put them in place. And then I backed out. I, and she goes, don't back out. Do it. And I said, what do you mean? She goes, I know you, and even if it sucks you will create content out of it. It'll be worth the, right. the the things. Let's scale it down from 12 to six and just try it. See if you like it. And if you don't like it, it's six things that, that you right. just tried and you have content from. At least you got out of the house over the pandemic. Just try yeah. it. And I went, you're right, I'm gonna try yeah. it. And I did it and I fell in love with it the very first night. And then I ended up doing 60 cities. And But, it, but she is, and the other thing about her, her name is Judy Marmel. We should tell her name. Yes. We, only because she is a gangster. She has the brain. And she's got some of the biggest comics in the world. She do, Yeah, she does. She has the brain that does not shut off for your life. Right. Judy will, Judy's the first person that I, we, I did the Impractical Jokers cruise. And I pulled her aside. I said, I'm going to do a cruise. She's like, what? I said, this is like my white whale. Yeah. I, that, I was is, on that cruise with you. Yeah. And you loved it. I had more fun yeah. than anyone on that boat. Yeah. I was saying to myself, I go, Bert's going to do one of these. And you even said back then, you said, I need to do a cruise. I pulled her and Nick Nusforo side, and I said, I need to do a cruise. This I have to do this. And we put everything in motion. She, Judy literally never forgot that thing and thought about it nonstop and would send me articles uh kid rocks cruise uh the fucking the wwe cruise like she thought about it not that's right. the thing that's a gangster about her i wish i could i wish i mean i'll tell her to say this out loud i wish you'd get rid of all her clients and just work with me right. that's the move right that's the move you know but yeah like but yeah she would fucking she would, you know, she would crush it for you, but you don't, you, I mean, like you are I so. I understand, here's what, here's what, you're, you're making a good point. There is a lot, I do put a lot on the people that I work with in the sense that, you know, it becomes, uh, I think, hard to know who you'll need coming up because there's yeah. different, like the movie side's a different world and like the, all those things are different worlds. And I don't, in those worlds, I don't know nearly what I know uh, like in this world. So in this yeah. world, I know exactly what's needed. I know exactly in those other worlds, it, it's a lot of different requirements and stuff like that. But Eli, I'm excited about the Eli Roth thing. Like I'm excited to. I always, when I was growing up, wanted. I looked at these comedy movies and I, I always loved them. I wanted to be in them. And then I always, and I think over the last few years, I go, we need more of them and we need Fuck them yes. now. We need those types of movies that are like early mid two thousands comedy, silly, goofy movies. That people can just escape and relax, and I think we're missing that. Think about how big comedy is right now. It's huge. I the mean, tickets are amazing. Like it's as big as it's been on the live side. It feels like. Oh, it's I, it's never been here. How but, many comedians? And I mean, you've been in this for a long time. How many comedians are theater comics? A lot. Fuck. How many people are arena comics? Let's, a lot. Let's name the arena comics. Let's you, just, Tom, Joe. Uh, uh, Dave Chappelle, Dave Chris, Chappelle Rock. Chris Rock, Bill Burr, Louis C.K. If he wants to, I know he's yeah. you know whatever. Um, Chelsea Handler, um, uh, Joe Coy, Joe Coy, Fluffy, Fluffy. Uh, you know, th th there's there's others too. I mean, there's there's uh, arena comics. Arenas. When, when when we were growing up, it was Dice. Right. It was Dice. Then it was right. Dane. Yeah. And then it was like one person became an arena comic, and they were the biggest one in the world. Now we're all doing them. And, and and by the way, I mean, I mean, not to not to, but your uh, arena comics are, are being doing arena is very accessible these days. I yeah. believe. I believe when you get learn, we learned how to take char charge of our own careers yeah. and isolate our fan bases and go like, yo, this is what I like. You like that? Yeah. We're all on the same page. Right. Come watch me do stand up. Right. Back in the day, it was like you hoped the Omaha Funny Bone sent out a mailer list. Yeah. To get people at your show. No, this is a whole new world. It's a world. Uh, look at Matt Reif, who's killing it. Matt Reif, he's a sweet kid. Like, great. It's awkward because it's like we look so much alike that people are always like, 
who, which one is you? Yeah. And that's I get that, tough. I get that a lot with that's hard. Trevor Wallace. That's very hard. Yeah. Trevor Wallace also. Yeah. So like all of these people, like this is a just, you can go out now and make your career what you want it to be. There's nobody really holding anybody back anymore. There's no gatekeepers. There's no Dude, gatekeepers. So when, that energy has got to go away. Like that energy of like any bitterness or any resentment or any anger yeah. that you have cannot be justified or rational right now in this moment in the world. Nope. At, you could be resentful at the government. You could be resentful at your parents. I'm resentful at both of those. But you cannot be resentful at anyone in this business keeping you down. Dude, so many times, like, listen, I don't even want to talk about this because it's a personal situation for me, but I was trying to buy um, tickets. I don't want, I'm going to go into this right now and because it's truly something that is real. My schizophrenic mother, we wanted, I'm trying to say how to do it. We wanted to euthanize my mother at a Taylor Swift concert. <laughs> Because it's about that time, and my mother doesn't doesn't really even she didn't really even know Taylor Swift. But we were going to explain to her to you who Taylor Swift was and how cool it was that we got tickets for her, and and we were going to euthanize her at, at the Taylor Swift concert so that she could enjoy a performance from Taylor Swift as the and the, but that would be the final thing she would see on this earth. Um, and we couldn't do it. It was very tough. So I mean, the reality is. Buying tickets to your favorite event shouldn't be that stressful. Game time is a fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theaters near you. With some killer deals on last-minute tickets and their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you'll have. I mean, browse through Game Time app and talk about upcoming events in your area, concerts, playoff games, everything. Forget planning months in advance. Game Time has deals on tickets right up until the day of the event. Get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theaters, and more. Game Time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% for the difference. Get images of your seats right before you buy. You know exactly what to expect when you arrive. Buy tickets in a matter of seconds. Two taps and you're set. So I'm telling you right now, download the Game Time app. You won't regret this. I've downloaded it. I'm using it. Download the Game Time app. Create an account. Use the code TIM, T-I-M, for 20% off your first purchase. Go do this. If you like going out and seeing shit, great last-minute ticket deals, great date shit, you're going on a date, you go, hey, you want to go see this? You want to go to a game? Or some people go, oh, my God, you got tickets? Of course I did. Download the Game Time app. Create an account. Use the code T-I-M for 20% off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code T-I-M. For 20% off. This is perfect. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. This is a great thing. You can go on this app the morning of something and then surprise all your buddies go, we all have tickets tonight. How cool is that? I'm telling you, game time. Download the app, create an account. Use the code TIM for $20 off your first purchase. No, and I remember when I was resentful. Sure, me oh, too. I remember that so. I remember when somebody would get the Montreal Comedy Festival and I wouldn't get it and I had a great audition and I'd sit there and I'd be outside New York Comedy Club or whatever smoking a cigarette in, a, in New York City and I'd be like, motherfucker, but this is what it is. I remember being resentful for people that didn't know I existed. Right. They didn't, I know, they didn't know I existed. <laughs> I like that. And I would just be like. I hate you. I hate these people. For not knowing. And then I'd run into them and I'd be like, what's up? And they'd be like, hi, I've never met you before. And I'd be like. Oh, for real? Right. But you didn't get my submission tape? Yeah. Oh, I was so pathetic. But I would do submission tapes and yeah. I'd put cool music in the front that I thought the guy would like. Oh, God, I wish I you had one of these. Oh, oh my, my God. God. It was what kind of cool music? This heart is on fire. <laughs> I am so pathetic. And then you would get out there and you would go, oh. just do, you would just do jokes. I, my, my stand up was so bad when I was yeah. young. That's the other thing I would say is like, I got really lucky. It's, it's, uh, uh, this is a big statement, okay? That could get me in trouble. No, that's okay. What's happening right now with comedy is what happened is what is what happens to hot chicks in comedy. Interesting. So hot chicks in comedy, they get scooped up the second they step on the scene. That's if, right. If you're beautiful, you're in, and you're pretty good, right? Even pretty competent, you're in. You're you're scooped up, and you got spots. You want to you want a headline? We'll take right. your headline. Agents, managers, let's get you in. Let's get you into theaters. Let's get you into right. Th like let's let's do this for you. That's right. Now there's some exceptions to this rule, and I'll say Chelsea Handler's a big exception. She's beautiful and 
man, when I first saw her, she was a gangster on stage. Right. But I will say that that is the problem is that a pretty woman sometimes, Elias is an exception, but they get scooped up and they get put in positions that they're maybe not ready for. Um, I got very lucky in that I was just a dude who got to be good or mediocre for a very long time, and then I got pretty good, and then I got that hot chick moment where they put, they go, you're ready for something, and then you're like, oh, I'm already good. I know how to do this. I've been doing it for 22 years. Right. That's what's going to happen with comics is comics are going to, they're gonna get they're gonna get like a, a video that goes big online, yeah. And they're and everyone's gonna be like, oh fuck, we gotta go see them. And then they're not gonna be ready. It's the last comic standing parable, 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 parable is where these guys could do five minutes, ten minutes, and then you're like, holy shit, that's the guy. And then they blow it during an hour. They blow yeah, they, it. Well, they can't. They can't sustain. So does this does this comedy boom that we're in right now? Does it end? Does it kind of? Is it the result of? We're out of the pandemic and everything, but do you see it ever contracting and going, you know, kind of getting smaller? It has to. It seems like it inevitably has to. I was saying this earlier. It's going to start when the when the cool kids start hating us. Yeah. When once they probably already do. I think they definitely oh, do me. They de- well no. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them like me, I, I think a little, but I feel like that's ending too. Yeah, there I mean once I mean I that, and like, by them, the way, I, I celebrate it. I Bring it. I'm a fan of fucking comedy. That's yeah. the thing. They have to hate us. Dude, when Nirvana told Molly Crew to go fuck themselves, yeah. that's the thing. That's it's right. gonna happen. Right. When the first comic that's like... Someone, one of these kids at the mothership is going to smack me in the face with brisket yeah. and then just get on stage and replace me. I mean, that's the thing is like... It, I mean, it's a gangster fucking move and not to like... But the that that's what makes art cool. Yeah, you for know? sure. Is they got to be like, yeah, I don't want to be a fucking arena comic. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> well, the that's the what the old scene arenas? was. When we started, when I started, not yeah. when you started, but when I started, everybody had a PBR, a beard, New Balance sneakers. They were all in Brooklyn or Echo Park. Yeah. You couldn't get on TV unless they loved you. We were all doing shows like Whiplash and Meltdown. It was Melania, and Kamel and Pete and all these guys. It was the outgrowth of the scene in Brooklyn, New York, yeah. and in like Echo Park and Silver Lake, Los Angeles. And then I remember things started to change, like Guy Code came in. And that started oh, to change because people Guy like, Code was the fucking canary. Remember Guy Code and Girl Code? People yes, were like, I do. oh, they can sell tickets and they're not hipsters. Interesting. Maybe there's a whole market here that we're fucking ignoring. Oh. And so all of a sudden, all these gatekeepers that for a year, and I know some of them, uh, you know, these guys that used to produce these really big shows and they used to work at management companies or maybe some of them worked at Comedy Central. Like, they were the ones who were curating comedy. They lived in Brooklyn. All their friends were like, we're going to this room, no, never clubs. It was like uh, a room, the Knitting Factory eh, or Hannibal Show or whatever, yeah. Whiplash. And then the Guy called Girl Code thing happened and it's like, oh my God, so there's this underserved market of essentially regular people <laughs> that are younger that don't live in Brooklyn and don't want to yeah. hear arcane literary references that will buy tickets. And Guy Code launched a bunch of these different people and that was kind of the beginning of the change of like, then the club started to open up and went, some of these new young creative guys that are hanging out downtown, let's have them in. Yeah. Let's have them in. And the cellar and the stand in New York and other clubs started bringing in younger, hipper comics. And then the old scene kind of dissipated. Oh, yeah. And then it just kind of became and the internet. But I remember when we started, it looked nothing like it does now. So I only wonder, and that was, I started 12 years ago. So I only wonder 10, 12 years from now, if it'll look anything like it does. It's oh, so thank interesting. God. I'm going to be fucking 65 You'll be out there. I'll be, you'll I'll, still, I'll still, you'll I'll still be, be hanging out. Oh, you'll be, I'll be doing, hanging out. You'll still be doing will, shows. And I'll celebrate it. I actually think you'll still be doing massive shows. I would like to be, I would like to be, I'd like to be maybe like, not like as Ron White. Frequently. I'd like to be like Ron White. I think maybe not as frequently, but I think you'll be out there killing. I just wonder what it'll be like in 10 years. It might be interesting. Like, I'm wondering, right now, every comic goes out, they all have a camera. They're all filming their oh, sets. Yeah. They're all cutting. You know, we weren't yeah. allowed to do that. No, yeah. They would, they would tell you, you can't film in here. Right. And you'd be like, oh, all the time. Because they would, they, like, their idea of filming was this big. Dude, this kid that was opening for me, nice kid. We, we get to Rogan's Club. I give him a guest spot on a show. I'm doing yeah. with Giannis Papas. And he goes, Can I set up a cat? I go, Buddy, buddy, buddy. Your first time in Joe Rogan's new comedy club. Nobody knows who the fuck you are. You've been doing comedy two and a half years. But immediately he's like, Well, wait, what's in it for me? Where's my clip? I want my mothership clip. Oh, shit. So, but but that's, there, that's the way it is now. That's the way it is. And I get it. 
because he's like, what am I going to do? Like you sit there and do 500 hours of a podcast, you fucking retard. Yeah, Liz I'm going to do yeah. one clip. That's a fucking, that's, that's a what's moment. coming. Dude, that's they, a moment. They all look at us like dinosaurs. They go, who gives a shit? You're Bert Kreischer sits there drinking wine. You're going to fucking sit there and you guys are going to talk about whatever. They're basically like, it's a minute, it's a great clip, it's viral on TikTok, and then boom, off to the races. Oh. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's the new no. way to do it. You, I, I'm, I'm obsessed with it. I can't believe we isolated it. Yeah. One day, we're going to be Motley Crue. That's it. Backstage of the VMAs. 100%. Going up to Kurt Cobain going, hey, man, I'm a big fan. And he's going to go, go fuck yourself. Right. Oh, that's going to suck. I hope, I but get it's going to gonna be, be beautiful because look at the—it's a nice journey. It's a nice journey. I guess it's a nice journey. journey. And look, Motley Crue came back. They're doing big tours now. They'll, it'll all come. It go, comes in waves. Yeah, it comes in waves. What sucks? What sucks is one day Rogan won't have his podcast. Can you imagine no, that? No, can no, you no, 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 no. Don't you say that? Can you? Don't you say that? I have to. Do you know that one day, eventually? There won't be a Joe Rogan. Be only, and this flips me out because for my life, my career, my everything, I've always, I just know that it's going on. I know that he's sitting across a desk from somebody. I know if I want to listen to it, if I'm on a plane or whatever, it's going to be there. But one day, I don't know, not anytime soon perhaps, but like one day it won't exist. Larry King went until the day he died. That's true. Maybe, maybe Joe will do the same. Joe's going to go do it forever. You think so? Yep. Interesting. I'm gonna I'm gonna say Joe will do it forever. I will tour forever. I will tour forever. Everything's forever. I'll do it forever. I love it. I'm, I'm but that's the thing is like it's the funnest. It's the funnest thing you could do for sure. Like I understand things will ebb and flow, right? But you just gotta go as hard as you fucking can. Yeah. God, that's so crazy. Yeah. What is the future? That's the question. What there's, is the future like? I don't know. What there's the a kid right now. In ninth grade. Listening to this. And he no. goes, and he just goes, oh, this is stupid. He goes, this is so retarded. This is, they're, they're so these stupid. Are, this guy's 50, he goes, and he's drinking rosé. <laughs> this is sad. And this, this other is actually, idiot's yeah. wearing a Hawaiian shirt and a hat. Yeah. And usually wears sunglasses like this because the lights are bright. And he oh, yeah. goes, I don't want to be that person. I don't want to be them. Yeah, I don't want to be them. Hold on, I brought my sunglasses. Oh, you did put them on. And it goes, and you go, somebody there's else. Someone, there's someone that's going to look at Mark Norman wearing sunglasses on a podcast. And go, we hate him. And go, why, why the, what are you trying to do? There's people out there that hate us right now. There's people. And that, that is good. That's that, what you want. You want you that. You want it. You want it because it means that there's going to be a natural, that there's still passion out there. There's people that have a hard time seeing our, our authenticity in these outfits. Uh, you know, me and you, I have a hard time seeing our authenticity. <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's people who I would say they may have a, 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 a because maybe people feel like we've become like monsters. <laughs> what happened to us? We used to be comics. <laughs> We're listen, Ricky Lake. <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen. There's there's people out there's people out there that are going to. Why wouldn't they hate us? You're gonna hate us. They're gonna hate us too. They're gonna hate us. I'm gonna hate us too. They're sitting on a stoop in Brooklyn. <laughs> They're smoking a cigarette. They're like, "That's what happens when you get rich. That's what happens when you become a, a, a success." Oh. And they're gonna become a version of it too. That's the other thing. Here's the deal. Oh. They'll become a version of whatever they hate. That's the ultimate irony. Yeah. If they're lucky enough, if they if they if they don't make it, then they can just never make it. But if you make it, you'll become some version of something you don't love because you have to do certain things you never had to do. You have to think about marketing. You have to sit down with oh, these people. Oh, you're right. You ha so they're gonna when I got into comedy, I fucking hated. Sorry, I'm saying this, Dane. <laughs> I hated that Dane would go, big secret coming on Thursday. Yeah. Can't wait to share with you guys. I hated it. Yeah. I hated guys that would tell stories about themselves. Yeah. I was not that guy. I really wasn't. I know this is going to sound... I know this is impossible for anyone listening right. to hear. I was not the guy that told stories about himself at all, all through college. Never once did I brag about, did I tell you about the time I got involved with the Russian mafia? Right. There are people that I went to college with that do not know that story that because I just didn't, I didn't talk about myself like that. Right. I was the person that was like, not, I mean, I, I wasn't a comic, but I was like, let, let, just move forward. Yeah. 
And and then when Rolling Stone discovered me, look, I'm doing it right now. I'm doing it right now. I'm promoting. Yes. When Rolling Stone discovered me, and then they started asking questions about me, everyone had a story about me because that's who I was. I was a guy that partied and was wild and crazy. Right. Did you hear about the time he took a shit on a pizza box to win an election? Right. Did you hear about the time he go? You know. Right. And so and then when I got into comedy, I realized, oh, I don't know any of these people. No one knows that I um crazy or I have these crazy stories. If I don't talk about them on stage, then because I, I tried to be the fucking smart comic. Right. I remember the first joke I wrote was because uh, I like Mitch Hedberg and I couldn't write his jokes. <laughs> and I was like, what if Papa Smo Smurf's middle name was Boner? Papa Boner Smurf. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> I did that in an alt club. Yeah. In overalls. That's Yeah. That was the beginning. And I was like, nothing. And that was the only joke I wrote. Yeah. I figured from there I could jump off and I right. could really riff. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> I remember that. Brody Stevens was in that room. Uh, Barry Katz's uh, ex-wife was in that room. Yeah. Um, ah, man, how awkward. And then, uh, and, then, and, then I, and then I felt like at one point I felt like especially when I started doing like, I was like, if I'm not telling my stories, no one is. And if I'm not promoting myself, no one is. And if I want to make a living at this, then I've got to get in front of it. I've got to be the guy going yeah. like, and and you know, short sell it. Like I tell you about, you know, I always try to take a story and 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 give you the, give you the part that, like I want to casually drop it to you. Like I fought a bear one time, and then someone's like, wait, you fought a bear, and then I go, oh god, now I got to tell you the story. It's a, it's a right. little trick I do sometimes. I used to do it a lot on radio. Yeah, when I did radio, but I would not, I would not have if I saw me today when I started comedy, I would not have liked. Listen, it. when you start, so you're too cool for everything. Yeah. And then eventually you realize not only are you not too cool for it, but literally you're going to have to do some version of what a lot of other people have done. You got to promote yourself, which is the grossest thing ever, but you have to do it. And there's no other way around it. Yeah. And, you know, you're. And I watch guys not promote on purpose. That's like, not the move. Sh Shane Torres. Yeah. Uh, brilliant. Brilliant. Brilliant comic. Right. You put a camera around him. Right. And he's like your 80 year old aunt. He's right. like, get it away. I don't have yeah. makeup on. Right. And I told him, I was like, we just produced this, Leanne just produced this special. Yeah. And uh, and I was like, yo, we're sending you to promo camp. Right. Like, we're going to take you into promo camp and teach you. Because there's a yeah. part of it that goes, it's the if a tree falls in the woods, does anyone hear it? She's right. a brilliant comic. There's a bunch of people right now that are hearing this and go, I bet he is. But do right. they go Google him? Right. Do they go find his comedy? Do they search him out? They won't. But if Shane... Starts takes talk, charge of it. Takes charge of it. Then they see his comedy, and then all of a sudden they get a brilliant comic that they get to fall in love with. That's the beauty of promotion, but it is the whoreness of it. Is like I it's watch whore, the, you're, you become a little bit of a disgusting pig whore. And if you and if you don't, I mean, I've always tried to lean in to just show them where the pig lays. That's right. Like put on a speedo. Show them fucking learn yes. a dance move. Yes. Fucking bring a marching band out. Yeah. Like just let them know that I am aware I'm promoting. Yeah. But I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm I'm not gonna be like like I, I, I There's don't know. not a lot of cool ways to promote. Uh so you gotta go big. I mean you yeah, gotta go it's, big it's, and you gotta not care. It doesn't really matter. You can't I'll tell you what you can't do. Right. I'll, I mean I'll, I'll give you the, the ins and outs <laughs> of what you can't do. Phone up. Guys, so crazy. Right. We sold out the first show. I, I, I We're adding a second show. This is insane. You got, like, that energy. Right. It's 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 like when, when I first started doing uh, MySpace. Yeah. And I remember you'd go, like, uh, I'm out. I'm in Brea tonight. Yeah. And there was a difference between saying, I'll be in Brea tonight versus I'll be headlining in Brea tonight. Right. Because then everyone's like, oh, you don't normally headline. I'm not going to see that show. Right. Like, if you put that I'm headlining, then yeah. you're like, but... There's something cool to be proud of it. Like Stavi just sold six shows in at the Vic Great. in Chicago. Chicago. Yeah. Dude, I'll tell you what, and this is my two cents. Yeah. But him saying, I sold six shows in at the Vic in in Chicago. Such an amazing weekend. I'll see you this weekend, New Orleans and wherever he was. Yeah. I remember the cities because I go, oh, if I was in that city, I'd go see him. He just sold six at the Vic. Right. Like that's a cool way to go about it. I think everyone's got their own little authentic thumbprint. Yeah. And I think once you find your thumbprint, then you can talk to your fans a little bit. Yes, yes. I mean, that that's 100% the case. Yours has always been a little more humble and, yeah. like, and like almost low-key, almost like you and Shane Gillis are the same yeah. way. Like Shane yeah. will be like, and the, but there will be a point. And I, there was a moment yeah. where I was, I got a nice cruise where I was like, 
I'd, I'd do a promo video to start the tour. Yeah. Sell them out and be like, all right, you won't hear from me again. Yeah. And then you go to arenas and you're like, oh, there's always tickets to sell. Yeah, you got to always there's hit it. There's always. Yeah. I mean, I think with my thing is just like something, you're so creative with it. I'm not as creative with it. So what I do is kind of like we cut really fun promos for things that are funny yeah. and kind of specific to the region because my show – no matter what, I have my jokes. I'm going to talk about where I am. Yeah. So there's going to be things you don't hear that are jokes like, so San Francisco or Long Island, like there's going to be, um, you know, it's what but I that's do. That's you. That's so, that's what that's I so do. you. It's what I do. It's like I have an interest in places. Like if I do Oklahoma City, there's 10 minutes on Oklahoma uh, City. Yeah. If I do San Francisco, there's maybe 15 minutes on San Francisco. Like I love that idea of walking around a place, putting together my thoughts, and, you know, workshopping them a little bit, maybe working them out on a podcast, but, like, making it a show that is specific to where I'm at at the moment. Yeah, like that. and it's also, it's also as a fan, as a, as a fan of yours, Yeah, it's what I enjoy. Like, coming here today, I was like, I know how your brain works. Yeah. And so I go, your brain never shuts down. It never yeah. shuts down. You have something, you're always writing some analogy or some yeah. rant on something, and I was like, I'm not writing at all. Right. <laughs> I literally was like, I got to start writing. I was literally like in the car going, what do we do about, how do we get an analogy about Austin? Oh, have you ever seen the movie The Swan? Well, and you did it, and that was beautifully done. Yeah, that was yeah, yeah, beautifully yeah. done. You're the only person in America to, that has not moved to Austin, Texas. You're the only one. Well, and it's the coolest place to do comedy. It is really cool. <laughs> Those motherfuckers. I mean, listen, it's a fun, for me, I love it. It's a fun, Dude, frequent visit. It's, I'll tell you what, I, I had the most fun. I've, and it's I, and the most fun. The and, club and is the, the most fun. The comedy mothership, and I, I, man. It's done. You know I would love 100%. to bust Joe's balls. No, it's done perfectly. Even in a funny way. It's done perfectly. It's done perfectly. It's, it's done perfectly. It's a comic put together the perfect comic club. That's right. So, and, and, and what's going to be cool is, you know. The city. If I worked with the urban planners, yeah. the city planner, the comedy club's phenomenal. Comedy club's amazing. It's great. I love, I, mean, I love going there. We, we, Leanne and I were talking because so we just bought a tour bus and we were talking about finding a, buying a place in Austin. I actually talked to Joe about getting his realtor, buying a place in Austin, and then getting a place on the lake and putting the tour bus so the place tour bus has somewhere centrally located to be. Interesting. Yeah, and it's not a bad idea. We may still do it. I mean, I, I wish I had bought a place. Uh, a year ago, two years ago, when Three you bought a place, now, yeah. I wish I bought a place then because I'm I'm there all the time. Yeah, to do I'm two there bars. a lot, and uh, I literally was, as you said, like I still have a house there. I was like, mm, maybe we, yeah, well, maybe I could stay there when I come. Yeah, you absolutely Jesus. can. The the thing that was smart is that, um, you know, it's a it's a good investment to have it's, a spot there. I wish I bought then. I, I look, I I when I go there, I I only see one hotel, and. Two Bears, the YMH Studios, and Rogan's the place. Now I get to go to. Now I'm glad the Company Mothership's open because it's it's it was. Though I did one night there and, and I had the f most fun I've I've ever had on stage. Yeah, it and was I'm talking, amazing. The only other time I've done a comedy club was comedy on state, which right. is the fucking best. It's amazing, and I fucking loved Comedy Mothership. In my opinion, was better than Comedy on State. Yeah, it was amazing, and that's hard to say because Comedy on State's the best. I, I, they wanted me to tell the machine story, and I was like, I'm absolutely not telling it. And they started going crazy, and I knew Ron White was upstairs, and I said, I'll tell it if Ron White comes down and tells Tater Salad. Oh, interesting. And Ron, and everyone's like, loses their shit. They're like, Ron White's here? Right. And then Ron White's like, I'm coming. Oh, wow. And he came down on stage, told Tater Salad. He hadn't told it in years. Oh, my God. I hadn't told it in years. I called That's Leanne, amazing. FaceTime Leanne, Leanne's favorite comics, Ron White. Yeah. Ron White and Bernie Mac. Yeah. And so uh, I, I played, I let her watch it on the phone. It was fucking epic. Yeah. It was amazing. epic. And, and you know, the thing that Joe's got going for him with comedy, with comedy mothership is that we're all going to come down to do his podcast all the time all the time all, all the, the time. time we're all well i'll also go down there all the time because the club's amazing and it's a great place to build stuff and work out yeah so. it's great and i want to do the small room yeah small room is fun yeah i mean it's look maybe okay austin is like a husband who won't stop asking for anal sex that's possibly true where you're like something's wrong we're like we're like what is going on with it like like 
Every time I talk to Joe and Tom, they're like, come on, man. Come on, man. Let me just try it. Let me just put the tip in. That is, that is the craziest analogy I've ever heard. You're like, 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 what is going on with it? What is going on with this guy that just keeps yeah, wanting to fucking ass? Keep bringing it up. Like, fucking, I'll let you do it when I want to do it. Right. Like, let me call you and say, hey, can I get my real <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they. I mean, they seem to love it. but They love it. And, and listen. Tom loves it. Tom's. Tom would be happy in fucking anywhere in the world. You could put Tom. I'm war- I've warmed up to it. Here's my problem. I come from New York. It ruins you for life. Yeah. When you grow up in well, New York. Well, you were also there during the ice storm. Well, but that, I mean. I remember your, t- yes. yeah, I remember that was my favorite was yes. your, I don't know if it was your Instagram or yeah. your Twitter during the ice storm. Yeah. And you're like, oh, good call, Joe. Yeah, it was freezing. But I, listen, I will say this. Coming from New York, you just get spoiled, man. Yeah, you, It's all kinds of different people. It's really cool. It's everything you could want in a place as a city. You're just meeting all kinds of interesting people all the time. Yeah, And what, food or whatever, it's like there is something. So when it coming to L.A. was a massive adjustment. And I just think going to Texas was a little, it was too, too much of an I adjustment. You, can I tell you? But I, you, I pop you, in. You are doing, you do, I, I'm envious of the way you do L.A. Yeah. You do L.A. right. I do it right. You yeah. do it fucking. I do it right. I was telling someone the other day. I was telling my, I don't know who I was telling now that I say it, but I was like, uh, he goes to like Musso and Frank's and, yeah. the, and Nobu. Yes. And the Polo Nobu, Club. And Malibu, Polo yeah, Lounge. Yeah. yeah, Polo Lounge. Yeah. That's the way you're supposed to do it. He rolls That's right. Up, he rolls up thick yeah. in a $150,000 car. Yeah. And fucking with a, with a, with a Hawaiian shirt, yeah. shorts and sneakers on. Yeah. And, and gets, that's the yeah. way you're supposed to do L.A. I think so you're supposed to look like a big toddler. You're, bo- you're supposed to. Like a big, rich, dumb toddler with no respect. Yes. That's and if really you're, it. If you're, if you're not doing L.A. like that. New you're York, your- you're in like boots and you're like cool and you're downtown. Scarf. L- scarf. L.A., you're supposed to look like you just got out of a youth hostel. Yes. Like you're out of a mental institution. Like and they you're can't here. tell if you're going into, into rehab or out of rehab. I've sat next to, in the best restaurants in this city, I've sat next to somebody in a lime green onesie who was like an adult. I love it. Yeah, with a that's face what I love, tattoo. That's what I love about LA. That's what I like about the West that's Coast. That's what I've always strived for in the city is to yeah. look ridiculous. To look stupid. To be ridiculous. I remember going to a restaurant when. Because um, once you start doing this, it's hard to go back. I get up and I wear ridiculous stuff and I walk around and it's all fine. I don't know if I could go back to New York where I'm like, I want to look smart. Oh, I, I, I want to feel, I don't. I got to lose weight if I want to go there. I agree both, um, yeah. on both counts. I agree with you. But to me, I'm like, there's something fun about dressing like, like someone with a real problem. I went to a restaurant one time when I was younger and I said, what's the dress code? And the guy said, you can't wear a t-shirt. And flip flops, and I said, "But that guy, this is in L.A." I said, "But that guy's in a t-shirt and flip flops." Yeah, and he goes, "Yeah, but he didn't ask what the dress code was." Interesting. And I went, That's great. So, so wait, what's that mean for me? And he goes, "You had to ask, so you're not allowed in." Right. I was like, "Wow, get me to the place where I no longer ask." Yeah. I remember that was like a game changer for me. The way I looked at things, I was yeah. like, "Cause I don't, I'm not really comfortable in a lot of clothes." Yeah. So I'm like, I'm really am. I have tactile issues, and so and t-shirts and flip flops and jeans. That's my. That's what I wear every single day. Yeah. Day. I can tell you the exact jeans, the exact t-shirt, and my flip flops that right. are available on uh, FreeWaters.com. But uh, that was like, I remember looking at him going like, "Oh fuck." Okay, so that's L.A. Yeah. L.A. is the place where, and look, I'm sure Joe would hear this and roll his eyes and be like, fuck that guy, fuck L.A., you know, like. Right. But, like, I, I like that energy. It's a fun energy. It's an interesting energy to have in a city where you're allowed to. I also like, my favorite thing about L.A. is that it's collapsing. Yeah. And I'll tell you. Oh, it is collapsing. It's collapsing, and I like that because it's exhausting to live in. You know, Hillary Clinton lost because she had an air of inevitability. People hate that. This idea that something's gonna have to happen. Yes. It's exhausting. Yes. So the, uh, Austin to me a little bit, and Charlotte, I mean, I'm not Charlotte, in Nashville and Miami, all these places, when you go to them, like I lived in New York, I live in the greatest city in the world. Do you know what a New Yorker would say to you if you said, fuck, this city sucks, they turn around and go, you have no idea how much it sucks. Yeah. You let me tell you how much it sucks for 10 minutes. You don't even fucking know. 
We shit on it. It was the greatest place in the world. It's the, the, the best our country could do. I, I was a tour guide in New York City. People from all over the world went all over this country and went, this is truly impressive. Yeah. LA's fine. There's a few other things. Yellowstone's beautiful. But as a city, yeah. this is it. And we would shit on it. We would shit on it. New Yorkers would shit on it. There's something exhausting about a place where people all feel like they're uh, all read the same brochure. Oh, yeah. I don't like that. There's As a comic. I love the-, the As a comedian. Yeah. There's something about ripping things apart that's attractive to me, not building them up. We should get courtside Lakers tickets. Yes, 100%. And we should be those guys. And dress like psychopaths. Dress like psychopaths. Yes. When's basketball start? This is how bad of a fucking... Is basketball coming soon? It's, it's going on right now. Oh, fuck. It's on right now. <laughs> Next year. <laughs> Next year. You don't have, you'll never be there. I mean, you have so, you're so many road dates. Well, let's, let's do you go. slow down at all coming up? Like, do you... Are you, is there a period where you go during the summer? Do you go like, I take a little bit? No, the, the one, the one, <laughs> the one, uh, caveat I have is that fully loaded, um, Leanne, Isla and Georgia will be on the road with us. That's great. So there, so we'll all be a family on the road, which is awesome. Amazing. There's catering. Right. There's fucking gyms. There's polar right. plunges. Right. We're outdoors. We're indoors. We can do everything. Can do we have two days off. In between, we have Monday, Tuesday off, or Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday off, so we can hang out in different cities. Right. It's going to be great. Fully loaded, I'm telling you, is for me, Yeah, that's a cheap code for me. Yeah. I mean, we don't, we don't, I don't take any money from our door deal. Right. We put it all back into the festival, because Leanne's like, the only way this is successful is if in 11 years, we sell it to, like, Budweiser. Right. And she's like, in order to get there in 11 years, you can't make money right. for the first fucking 10 Right. You got to make money on 11 where everyone's like, well, this is inevitable. This is undeniable. Right. Um, so that's the big thing for me is uh, I'll do that. I'm already double booked for the fall. I'm, I'm literally, I have three projects I'm supposed to do, and then I have a tour lined up that we haven't announced. But I think I'm, I don't know what's going to happen for the fall. I, I mean, it's, it's, it, to, to watch it is amazing. Oh, well, to watch your it. speed and pace is wild. Well, I appreciate it. I, 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 I don't. Uh, you know, I, I feel like I've gotten to a place where I, I don't know, I, I, I don't know, I don't know how to respond to that because I go, thank you. Yeah. I know that people, I would listen to a podcast today where some guy was kind of shitting on me, low key shitting on me. Like, all he does is work. And I felt like going, like, yeah, but, but you don't. Right. Like, I'm, I'm looking at your career. Right. He, this guy thinks he shows up and he does one podcast a week and maybe does a weekend and then he's making something. I go, buddy. No. You got to step up your fucking game. Yes. Like, I don't want to name, I'm not going to name the guy, but I was like, you, being good at comedy is not everything. No. You got to do everything. You got to fucking hustle. You got to like. You got to work. You got to work. And and uh, and I just think that the only thing I am in control of is working. It's so funny. I used to shit on Kevin Hart for it. Yeah. I used to, not even low key, I always shit on Kevin Hart for it. Because I was like, we all work hard. And it's true. Anyone listening to this right now is like driving a truck to go dig a hole. And it's like, trust me, dig a hole. It's hard fucking work. Right. But like, I always want to isolate the luck. Like, I want to find the luck in the thing that happened yeah. for you. So where you're digging the hole and then all of a sudden one day guy's like, hey, man, can you help me? Like my dad, I'll give him per example. My dad was a lawyer in Florida for a very long time. And then one, uh, one day a guy from Miami called up and said, hey, I do this thing. It's kind of like, it's 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 a little bit looked down upon, but I, I do closings for homes as a lawyer. Um, normally, like when you close on a home, there's a, a place like Chicago Title that'll close on a home and they'll hire a lawyer and we'll get that lawyer fee. What I do is as a lawyer, I just do the closing myself and then I, I get the closing fees and then I, I waive the lawyer fee because I'm the lawyer, I'm already there. But can you do that for me? I have a, com a couple coming up from Miami. And my dad's like, yeah, sure. And he did it. Closed on their home for them and waived his lawyer fee. And then my dad was like, oh, that's interesting. It's really good business. Like it's, I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm not technically getting money as a lawyer, but I'm, I'm making money in this closing fee. And then my dad started doing that. And then my dad turned that into a business and sold his business for a lump sum to Chicago title. Right. But it was looked down upon with, uh, by other comics or other uh, comics, lawyers, lawyers, because he wasn't, he wasn't in court. He wasn't like right. fighting cases. But I remember my dad made a good amount of money after that, 
And I remember looking at that little bit of luck, that one phone call. If he hadn't answered the phone. Right. And I look at that for me all the time. Yeah. And I wanted to know what it was for Kevin Hart. That's the thing. I would do a whole podcast on luck, just finding out the one thing. For me, it was I'd written something about the Louis C.K. stuff. A lot of people, it was a fever pitch, and I wrote something about it. It was just basically like, Louis is a great comedian. You could think whatever. But, I mean, there were people saying, oh, and you know what? He wasn't that funny or what? It was stupid. And I wrote it on Facebook. And Ari Shafir showed that to Joe Rogan, who messaged me on Instagram and said, this is really good. This really? is brilliantly put. And then I said, thanks, Joe. Thank you. That was it. Oh, wow. And then he messaged Gangster he, fucking he, move. Yeah, thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. He messaged me again, or I messaged him again because he mentioned me on a show and he said something nice. I said, thanks for the mention. Really appreciate it. And he goes, let me know when you're in LA, we'll do a podcast. And then eventually we did. That was my stroke of luck. That like, was the stroke of luck. That's the thing. I mean, that was the, the second stroke of luck. I think the first stroke of luck was I was doing well in a comedy show in Brooklyn. Chris Gethard was there. He got his manager to look at me who signed me. I ended up getting the Montreal Comedy Festival. I killed at that. I did really well there. I got an agent. Shout out to Hillary, who's angry at me because I called her fat. Honey, stop. And she was really good. And I said to her when I sat down at JFL in 2016, I said, I want to be on the road. I said, put me on the road. I want to yeah. learn how to be a comedian. Put me on the road. All this other shit, the scripts, the this, the that, that's all great. And we'll do all that too. Get me on the road. 1,500, seven shows, don't give a fuck. The next week or the next month, I was in San Antonio doing seven shows for no money. And I was like, let's keep this going. And that was the, then I kept doing that up until Joe allowed me to do his podcast. And it was, you know, we hit it off and, and I was, you know, I was really lucky. There's luck, there's luck. And then there's uh, approaching luck. Like I was, uh, my luck, oddly enough, my luck is Tom waiting on Charlie Murphy. Interesting. Because Tom was doing a show with Joe and Charlie Murphy. Charlie Murphy's like, yo, let's go to dinner. Tom's like, all right. And Charlie Murphy was taking a while. He was a little late. Yeah. And Joe was standing there, and, and or Tom was standing there, and Joe walked past him and was like, hey, man, you're really funny. Tom's like, oh, thanks. And I think t Tom explains it better, but he was like, I just was going to just leave. But I just, I was waiting. Right. And he's like, I don't even think we went to dinner that night, but he waited and he met Joe. And then I honestly think... Because I was good friends with Tom at the time, when uh, when Ari and Tom were in the car and, and Joe had heard the uh, Tracy Morgan story, he was like, God, man, that's a great story. And they're like, oh, that's Bert's story. And they're like, he's like, who's Bert? Had Tom not been in the car? You know, Ari's not yeah. a very ineff effective human in right. moments. Right. Like, he's not the guy to, like, he's not just matching mostly, people up. Well, right. he's, yeah, he's usually just high in the back, just, like, right. kind of. Like, I remember Ari one time was like, hey, man, someone was telling one of your stories on stage. I go, who? And he goes, I don't know. I go, well, what did you say? And he's like, nothing. Yeah. I go, why didn't you say something? And he was like, I don't know. Right. So, like, but, like, I look at that because through that, then Joe messaged me. And Joe's, I mean, Joe's a lot of our luck. He's a huge amount of luck for all of us. I mean, it, you could you could, ail you could isolate almost everyone's luck and, and connect it. it. There should be a thing. Again, yeah. Six degrees of Joe Rogan. Yeah. I mean. Oh, that was my big time luck. Like 100% because I, I had, I had, that was the biggest platform I'd ever been asked to be on. And you were so fucking perfect. Well, we, I love the guy. Like we, we became really good friends and like, he's a really fun guy to yeah. talk to. And like me and him were being funny and like, we liked a lot of the same, we we're interested in a lot of the same shit. You guys are dialed into a lot of the same shit. We're dialed into I a lot of the I same had, shit. I, I don't have a lot of the same interests as he has. You're, they're, they're different interests, probably. Well, no, they're, I don't even know if we have any interests. Right, right, right. Just stand-up comedy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, honestly, I go, yeah. like, I don't know Harambe. I don't know, like... Right. Like, I don't know, the, I don't know uh, anything political. Right. I don't know anything about uh, psychedelics or space right. or jiu-jitsu. Like, I wonder why he likes me. I think he likes you because you're, he loves comedians. He yeah. loves comedy, and he loves people that build stuff and you built something. And I think that's probably why I think I he just respects love comedy. that. That's I, it. I, I just love comedy. He respects that. Like, I didn't know who, I didn't know who Alex Jones was until way right. too far. That's funny. Like I remember one time I walked into the, I walked into the green room at the store. Yeah. Someone's like, Hey Bert, when are you going to have Alex Jones on? And I was like, fucking never. Right. Right. And it was Alex Jones. <laughs> and I was like, I didn't even know who he was. <laughs> 
Hey, Bert, what do you have Alex Jones on? By the way, by the way, I could never have him on because you know I would just green light everything. Yeah, you'd go. That sounds great. I would green light everything. He's a fascinating guy. He's him and Donald Trump and Caitlyn Jenner are my three. Caitlyn Jenner's a gangster. uh, They're my American meaning. They're the most American lives of all time, in my opinion, in this era. Dude, Alex Jones, you can't. Who are your three? Caitlyn Jenner, Caitlyn Jenner, and Donald Trump. The most American, like, because if you look at all of their lives, you go, this doesn't really work in another country. Like, a specifically American country, like, a, a gold medal decathlete winner marries a momager of the most successful family of, of, of Instagram thoughts that's Whose ever lived. father acqu- got OJ acquitted. You got OJ acquitted. You, you, that's a movie. It's a movie. That's, and not, real. that's not real. That's not real. That's not real. It's crazy. That's crazy. It's crazy. And then if you look at, like, Trump... This guy who was a, a, a wrestling heel and a game show host on television, a reality star, ends up becoming the president of the United States as a gag, as like a bit. Yeah. That's the most, that's another movie. And then the third movie is a guy like Alex Jones, who started out in Austin yelling at cops because he thought the DW checkpoints were unconstitutional, ends up somehow becoming an enemy. He's been an enemy and an ally of everyone on every side at one point. Yeah. He hated the Bushes, and then, you know, and the right wing hated him. When I grew up, they hated him, and now they like him because he was friendly with Trump, but, like, he was this guy that throughout his career became his own one-man media company. It's yeah. in the only country, and and then had it all like kind of. Now he owes a billion dollars because of that. Yeah, well, how's he? How's Who knows? I don't think it's. I mean, I don't think they're gonna get. They're not gonna. He doesn't have it for them to get. So wait. So what happens? To, like I don't even know. Like, I don't this either. Isn't what a child, I, mean, I am. I don't even know what happens to his life. I mean, I think there's, him, they're his cars. They, 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 he has to give him a lot of things, and then I guess they, they there's a certain amount of money he's allowed to earn, and then they take all the rest. I imagine that's how judgments work. But of the, those three people, I go. What, could that have happened in Sweden? Like, no. none of those people's lives are possible in any other country except America. Like, you look at the British people, and it's like, so the royals. But if you're outside of the royals, there's not, it's not, you know. I would have loved to have been a royal. Oh, God, it would have been amazing. Mary That's Queen. why Meghan Markle, we knew she was kind of full of shit. Do Leanne, you remember? Do you remember? Leanne knew. You, you called yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You called me, and I was like, this is bullshit. Meghan Markle, the... My favorite royal is uh, Prince Philip. Interesting. Yeah. He a, lived, a quiet dignity. Oh. A quiet dignity, Prince he, Philip. He lived a I like bachelor party's Princess life. Beatrice. Which one's that? Get up, Princess Beatrice. She's a little, she's a fun, she would be at Fully Loaded. If Wait. there's somebody at Fully Loaded, it's oh, her. Oh, who is she? She's she's no model, but she is at she Fully Loaded. Um, she likes to throw a few back. Beatrice likes to, and she's a little scary up front. Whoa. But I mean, she likes to throw a few back, and she always looks a little. Whoa. I mean, I'm assuming she'll never hear this, but what the fuck? Well, they're inbred. Yeah. They're all inbred. I was like, that's Habsburg. But again. this shows. Let me see the, I love that they just post the bad pictures up front. No, I want to see the top one where she looks like she's fucking Skeletor. <laughs> Up at the top right, top right, top right, top right. There we go, that one. Oh, it's scary. What the fuck? It's terrifying. Now go to Princess Eugenia. This Wait, is her I, sister. I mean, Eugenia's a little better. Eugenie, yeah, she's a little better. But who are they related to? Uh, there's Eugenie. Oh, oh, who knows? They're, I don't know. They're, yeah, she's better. She's better. But it's inbred. It's inbreeding. It is. It is it's inbreeding. inbreeding. It's inbreeding. The, uh, no, no, no doubt. Did you watch The Crown? A little bit of it. I couldn't get into it. Everyone loved it, but I, I couldn't. I loved it. You know, I, I, only I, gotta, like, I only watched for Princess, Prince Philip. I got to try it again. He was the best. He would just go to an island and be like, bring out the light-skinned ones. I'll fuck them first. Amazing. And then they'd be laying around with just indigenous people. And they're like, Prince Philip, we got an SOS. Your, your something died. And he'd be like, damn it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Kill the ones I came in. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. He really, you know, you, but you've created a way to kind of be an American royal in your own way. No. Kind of. Please. Think about it. Please. You, I love when you pitch me th- shit yes. I don't see. Do you remember one time I, start, I was telling you I was having panic attacks and you go, why? It's the best it's ever going to be today. 
You're making more money than you've ever made. You're selling more tickets. No one told you you had to quit drinking. Your family's alive. It never gets better than today. And I went, you changed my fucking mind. No, it was it, because I- It's me on being a royal. Here's why I think you are a royal. You traverse the country with a cavalry. You have your own meat. Oh, this, like, is right. this is the way royals used to do it. You travel around with your own, you know, cavalry. You have a chariot that you own your oh own God. chariot. Okay, you're right. I'm Prince Philip. You are received when you go to a place. You're received by adoring masses. I am Prince Philip. And you do this all while enjoying the spoils of a glass of wine. I love your brain so much. Or a so cocktail. Much. Or a feast? Oh, this is Have the greatest. Have you ever had a feast? This, if you I can drink whenever I want. I you, gotta put on fancy clothes yes, at the end of the night? If you describe the life of a royal to someone who had been on the planet a few minutes, and you describe your life, they would go, oh, he's a royal. He comes into town with the cavalry. The adoring masses are there. He will feast. He will drink. God damn it, Tim, you're good. I mean, that's the truth. You figured out a way to be an American royal. Now... It's because America and Americans have a fifth grade reading level. <laughs> <laughs> but you're King Ralph. I'm King Ralph. You're King Ralph. Burke Kreischer, you are one of the, it's amazing to see you, what you've done. Oh. You're, you're insane. I, I, where can people buy these tickets? Uh, fully loaded is the festival that starts this fall. I don't know when this comes out. I only have one weekend left. It's next weekend, and I think they're all sold out for Tops Off. The Machine movie is out Memorial Day weekend. Go to the machine.movie. We've set it up so that we can pre-buy tickets for a live in-theater event that'll stream directly into the theaters from the red carpet. I hope you'll be at the red carpet. I'd love to be at the red carpet. I would, I would love to be. Then, then everyone go get your tickets Truly. for that Thursday show. We're doing a premiere Thursday. And uh, and we will be streaming from the red carpet. I don't know, I don't know what capacity it'll be, but I think what we'll do is we'll have everyone that is coming stream right into the movie theaters for the first maybe hour. Yeah. Uh, go to the machine dot movie. Uh, like I said, fully loaded. The cruise is sold out. Uh, tickets are available. We start in Forest Hills. We got Tiffany Addis, Lewis Black. Uh, Amazing. Yeah, and it's it's the Rupp Arena. Uh, Little Caesars. Oh, that's me this weekend. Yeah, those are all done. And then, uh, yeah. I mean, amazing. You've just, I mean, it's like, I've been on the road a lot. You've been on the road a ton more than me, but it's like, it is interesting. It is an interesting, we see more of the country than most people will. I, and I, I mean, dude, the most blessed I ever was, was during the pandemic. Yeah. They would go out in the country during the pandemic and yes. see what the world was like. That's right. Me too. Gives you a little bit different of the a perspective. The most intense thing I ever did was the Alex Jones podcast with Joe a week before the election during the pandemic in Austin. Wow. So Austin, whether I hate it or love it, it's a huge part of my life. Oh, it's a huge part of my life. I'm there literally once a month. It's a yeah. huge part of my life. I know, I mean, I know Austin, I, I would argue better than Tom. Yeah. Because he's there as much as I he's am. He's like in Iceland half the time. Dude, he's. I'll reach out to Nadav. I'm like, can I podcast with them? He's like, he's in Reykjavik. I'm like, what was he doing? Ironing out an agreement? He fucking, he's dead inside. The uh, Well, you know what? That could be said for many of us. Yeah. yeah we better keep yeah. dancing keep dancing because you better keep you know there was a great there was a great there's a great quote as black jazz musician older guy and there was this young jazz kid white kid and he yeah. comes into uh this jazz club in new york city called smalls a famous jazz club and the young white kid's like really enthusiastic and everything and he's talking about like how he's gonna do this and that and this that and the other thing man and the black the old black guy just laughs and he goes and the, the kid goes well, what are you laughing at and he goes you better love the music you know, he just laughed because you better love the music because this all this other shit the kid was saying was just like yeah. ancillary and like he was just like you better love the music, man. And he goes and the kid goes, oh, interesting. And then I talked to that guy later and he's like, I fully understood what he meant a few years later. But like at the end of the day, it's n it's not really about the money. It's not about the clout. It's not yeah. about any of the bullshit. It's literally about do you love the music? Do you love putting out stuff that people laugh at? And whether you do it on the internet or whether you do it on stage or whether you do it wherever you do it, do you love that? And you have to love it because if you're doing it for anything else, the, all those other things will fade away. But if you love what you're actually doing, you'll do it forever. The feeling, I wish I could give this. I was, I was saying this about 
chefs the other day. Yeah. I, lo- I love making food for people. Right. I love it. I love. I love making people happy. I right. love. That's what I love about stand up. Is right. When I make people laugh, it makes me feel good. Like I go, I'm giving. I'm. I'm. I'm it, it's like feeding them. It's. A, it's. Yes. It, there's a. There's a similar yes. feeling. But the thing I love more than anything is the moment you figure it out. Not the f- the f- not the time you kill with the bit. It's the time where you say it a little off, but you figure it out the f- before you kill with the bit. That's right. So like the time where you go, oh shit, if I say this different next show, it's going to murder. That moment for me is everything I love about stand up. That moment and I look for that. Yeah. That moment, the only example I can give is 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 the first time I I I didn't have an end to the machine and I said uh I said um she opens the door, you're coming with us. He spits vodka in her face and uh, looks at me and goes, and the first time I went, he looks at me and goes, fuck that bitch, this is Russia. That moment where I went, oh, I have an end of the story now. That yeah. moment is the great, that's the music for me. Is like I wanted you to do that, at, but I wanted to hear at the end, I wanted you to do some version of like, fuck, this is Texas. Fuck you, this, this is Texas. Fuck this bitch, the, this is Austin. Yeah, this is Austin. And then the whole, the whole place would have completely. But the other part is like, and look, I don't know. No one will get to, no. You may enjoy that rant about me being a, a royal, yeah. But you'll never enjoy it as much as the guy sitting across from the guy right. who did it, yeah. And that's the beauty of comedy. Is right. like I get to hang out. I said this to Leanne the other day. I, my friends are literally the funniest human beings in the world. Yeah, in the world, my that's friends. True. I can call up. I can call up the funniest people in the world, except for a couple. I'm, I think they hate me. Right. But I can call up the funniest people in the world. And and laugh at any moment about anything. I'm on That's a text right. thread. I'm on a text thread with Big J, Dan Soder, Ari Shafir, Sal Volcano, Nate Bargatze, and two other people, two other comics. And the it, the chat thread's called Pussies. And all we've said to each other is, "We're not there yet. I'm not there yet. I'm on my way." And it's we don't remember what the thread is from. That's and, so funny. And today, Ari goes, I'm on my way. He just, on the way here, he goes, I'm on my way. And I said, I'm five minutes out. And Soda wrote, I don't think I'm going to make it. Ah, so funny. Grown-ups don't do that. No, this they is, we, we get to live these crazy lives. Like, I think that's a huge. Yeah. Where you have, I have, I have, I have, I have they're all adults. They're all adults with health insurance and life insurance. Right. And they're, and we're all continually texting about somewhere we'll never go. That's right. And like, I, it's, it's the fucking best. And I'm drinking rose on a fucking Monday. In Beverly Hills. In Beverly Hills. It does life get better. It doesn't get better. I, I Kill the ones I came in. Kill the ones he came in. Burke Kreischer, fully loaded. Go get tickets. He's, he's doing it forever. I love you, brother. All right. Love you too. Thank you.